Welcome friends, it's 99.9, good vibes all the time. Today's broadcast is brought to you by the good people at Jennifer's Tarot Positive Free. If you like free tarot, and I know you do, because you might have showed up here after we were done, <laughs> go see Jennifer Tarot's Positive Free. This lady knows her cards as well. For those of you out there with furry friends and you're ever wondering what's going, what's going on and uh, how can we make even better friends, Shannon Myers over there at For Your Animals Health at ForYourAnimalsHealth.com would like you to know that you have very many amazing ways to get in touch with your furry friends. I see people starting to arrive to the program today, taped before a live studio audience. I am your host, Hugh Jorgen. That's Jorgen with a J. All right. So we've got uh, all kinds of people showing in. I'm doing well. Thank you for showing up. Look at we're, we might as well start taking down the top nine at nine. Uh, low vibing kind of day. Emmanuel, how are you today? Good to see you here. Good to see you here. You guys can let me know if the volumes are okay, if everything is going well. Um, and then I see Scarlet. Scarlet will be up first uh, today. Then Emmanuel. Uh, then we have Avni. Hi, Avni. Good to see you, Avni. Um, Formularia is here. Hi, form former. I want to say formerly Aria because we haven't seen our friend Aria in quite some wa quite some time. Formerly Aria. <laughs> how hey how are you? Make sure I get these names down right. Um, sending you love and blessings. Hi, thanks everybody for asking how I'm doing and for uh, Autumn Phoenix Gypsy for sending love and blessings and we should send some uh blessings to autumn phoenix gypsy's way uh check her out everybody she's pretty pretty good stuff um and that's it that's just a list of four or five that's perfect for all you um first timers newcomers we got we got such a loyal benevolent amazing uh group of people that come around not too many people know about us but we're really happy that you uh that you found us and that we actually have this space and time to share with one another this is what's up i want to talk to scarlet if scarlet is peace she says peace love and coffee hey that sounds good to me we got the peace and the love let's just get a little bit of coffee in there All right, so Scarlett, um, I know your I know of your situation. Just let me know that you're still here in the chat room, and we can go ahead and start getting into the tarot today, because that's what we're here. Tomorrow's tomorrow's uh, free tarot readings are not a go. It's Thanksgiving up here in Canada, so I will not be available. Uh, we've got other things on the go. Feeling unsure what's happening with Garrett and I. Apparently uh, today. Apparently, he will be able to have a phone uh, to use in prison. I wonder if he will connect with me or if he's moved on and that we are, we are over. Hmm. Let's have a look at this. So this is someone that you, you write to and you talk to and, and you know um, that there is a barrier. There's an impossibility for you to be together. Manual 1-6, you're going to have to fix your stuff. None of your stuff is coming through. All right. Some cards out for Scarlet, please. All right, Scarlet, it's it's tough. You know that old if you know that old song, and it's a real croony song. I think from like the late '60s or '70s. Not like Three Dog Night, or uh, I can't remember who sang it, but it was like. If you can't be with the ones you love, honey, love the one you're with, right? And that didn't mean just second place. That meant that song meant you. If you can't be with the ones you love, return to self-love. And this is the way it will go. Ace of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, <laughs> Tara's saying this is still a wide open. Oh, six, six of Wands here. And the Three of Pentacles. Yeah, I think you might hear from this person. It's it's not going to be for like maybe a week or so. But I think this person is going to reach out to you. Um, as far as the phone goes. Six of Wands indicating that there's victory 
in your situation so you being able to have what you want in this situation scarlet is a big one let's zoom in on these closer so you can see them we start with the ace of pentacles so this is a card of new beginnings regardless so if it's the start of like his ability to reach out to you i think you will use it um but you know you are you mentioned you're very invested in this person like your mental constitution and your emotional and your emotional intelligence are wrapped up in terms of the connection and the communication with with this person so look at this this is all this pentacles all this time you know for the um, for the weight and the amount of time that you're having to put in from your position in this relationship you the cards are really asking you to say is all of this really even worth it scarlet is all of it even worth it like how true to the end goal in your knowingness of how long you know like what is your intention with Garrett all of this stuff is saying that is completely unknown still but the things that you do know stack up as like challenges obstacles and adversities to you getting what you want or having your happiness through the exercise of, of you know being so invested because this is cards of money too so you're overly invested in this person and in this connection and the cards would like to say ace of pentacles style right snap back to reality oops there goes gravity you know scarlet you could be living out so much more than what the seven of pentacles is there like a stick in the mud all about it being like you know the uphill battle and how long that that's going to take you know you're you're very invested into it but how invested there's a lot of future to happen between now and the time that you would eventually have this in your life and if you're willing to commit to that uphill battle which i see you are right the valiant knight is like leaving the castle and the people around him are like throwing roses to being like you know what you go on out there you can you're you're free to believe what you want to believe and make your your life happen and your experience happen but you know it's going to be a long journey and a tough fight and an uphill battle because the communication that comes from this person may not be on the regular you know you may hear from them periodically and sporadically okay but again when it comes to this your mind will always play the adversarial role in convincing you that you can't happen and the more you know what an uphill climate is and how much challenge and adversity is already before ahead of you making this situation happen when you overthink of it when you allow the worry to consume you in any kind of way it eats away it, it and it adds even more obstacles this is an uphill battle for you to climb okay in the short term it looks good it looks like this person will reach out to you but i like for your own sake in knowing like how invested you are in this particular outcome in this particular person the cards are saying you're more than welcome to it you're more than entitled to it but be prepared for an uphill battle battle and an uphill journey okay the ace of pentacles is saying you know when you come back to the ever-present moment you can have what you want in this life you can be what you want in this life and don't let anyone ever else tell you any different whether it's a tarot reader or a family member or any one of that anyone like that that you come across to tell you that you can't because if you have the resolve which i think you do and you're willing to commit to the long-term investment with this person you can attract this into your life will you still even want it by then though there's a lot of future to happen that's what the seven of pentacles really says okay that yeah so i see the it's scary it's not regular communication right who puts the fear on it you do because you're so invested in that particular outcome we have to let find a way to let go uh, sometimes of our of our expectations um, and live outside of our own narrative about how we feel you know how much this means right because until we get to that point the laws of the cosmos you know whether it comes in the farm form of um, like bricks and mortar and 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 jail bars it'd be, be a little jail jailbird right um you gotta always question well what the heck 
you know why can't why can't it be easy why can't it be better you know why why is there all this distance and all this obstacle between two lovers it has a lot to do with the time we live in and and the and the individual journeys that we go on right it has a lot to do with that yeah well and, and it's not it doesn't have anything to at the end of the day does it really have that much to do with you scarlet you you put a lot of it on it you give it a lot of your power and it and it returns to you as you know whether it's pain insecurity fear and it and then it bubbles over and you kind of get wrapped up into a tizzy i'm here to give you a big hug being like don't worry like there are so many star-crossed lovers on this planet you know in this solar system you know that are here that are out there get in touch with that part of you that higher sense of self that gets in touch with like a soulmate with your soulmate so that your soulmate can come to you in different ways different mannerisms than that one tunnel vision thing that you've got going on right it is obsessive, right? It's hard. Begin. Try to begin with some meditations and motivations. That can truly help you out in that situation 100%. All right. Thank you so much, Scarlett. I appreciate you. And keep your head up. Keep, uh, keep investing all of these money cards, these coin cards. Invest them back into you, number one. That's the only way to the t look out for you. Look out for number one. And it doesn't say like be a bad greedy person looking out for number one. It's just like recognize when you're giving thoughts of thoughts of Garrett too much, like playing it over in your mind and 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 becoming worried that it's too like just just stop it. Get out your Ginsu and just slice it right there. Like, no, I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to be a prisoner of my mind and do it for you not for any without any expectation but that with just with with um, health and liberty in mind and in check all right autumn smith says i could use a hug as well well i'll be right back we got to turn it over to jimmy fries and studio two uh to go ahead and update the list and see how everybody's doing today scarlet once again it's a pleasure to speak with you Jimmy Fry's coming to you here from Studio 2 with an update on the list. It is October 10th, 2020. I hope you're doing very well out there. It is such a pleasure to see you all in the house, in the room. So we just finished reading for Scarlet. Next up is Emmanuel16, Avni, and formerly Aria. Um, whoever's watching, can I get the people, if I did not call your name, please type 99.9 .9 into the chat room so that you can be added to the list today. F-Y-C-H, it's fun to go at the F-Y, oh, A-H, not a C-H, for your animal's health. We can, you can get a new dog, you can ride a new horse, you can do anything you want. Okay, same here, for your animal's health. Sure, see you soon. Hold on, everybody, hold on. Just, uh, everybody says, like, oh, we're done the reading, we're back live. This is what's going on. Um, Manual 1-6, Avni, formerly Aria, for your animal's health. You're welcome, Scarlet. Peace, lots of love. We got some 99.9s rolling in now. I see Mima in the house at the top 9 and 9. Uh, Nonsiba Dube. Nonsiba Dube. Welcome, Nonsiba Dube. Nonsiba Dube. All right. Hopefully, I'm saying that wrong. Uh, Al Alisnia? Elis Elisina. Elisina. Mr. Dabalina. Mr. Da Bob Dabalina. Bob was a jackass, much like a donkey. Here we go again. Okay. Uh... L. Hopefully, I'm saying Ellis. Ellis. Ellisina. 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 It could be Ellisina. Jesus, I'm just going off the rails right off right off the top today here. Uh, purple. I see a 99.9. .9. And I. Oh wait, Autumn Smith. I see a Autumn Smith 99.9. .9. We'll go Autumn Smith and then Purple. Don't forget to let me reverse that. When I get in there, sing on, sign on. Oh, and um, so this is all the people that have, okay.
So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got nine names on the board. Okay. So if oh, Karen will sneak in there. Okay. Shh. That's it. Not too many people know about this awesome little tarot channel. We're gonna take it back to the host for more tarot readings. All right. For your animals health at www.foryouranimalshealth.com. You got a dog, you got a pony, you got a horsey, you got a kitty, you got a little chickadee doo dah over there. You gotta, you want to see what's going on. You want to see how spiritual that connection actually is. Oh my goodness, it's amazing when we become spiritually awake to the nature and the animal kingdom. It's absolutely wonderful. And for those of you that like free tarot, and I know you do, don't forget to check out Jennifer's Tarot Positive Free, a 99.9 .9 Friend of Nine Network affiliate. Okay, Emmanuel16, uh, you are live and on the air. Emmanuel, please go ahead. If you have a question today, and drop me a question. Oh, yeah, and the list is like this. Emmanuel, Avni, formerly Aria, Mima, Nonseba Dube, Elisna, Elisnia, I'm off the rails today, Autumn Smith, Purple, and Karen. This is good. Um, a reminder to switch me with Purple. Yeah, yeah, Autumn, you, I saw your 99 was in there. I, I almost missed it. Um, <laughs> okay, second call for Emmanuel 1-6. All right, we got. Well, thank you for the help of the moderators. Emmanuel One Six says, "What will be the outcome as I have uh, to, as I move to South Sweden, flight school to continue my flight uh, practicum participation, that award? Okay, that's cool. Let's have a look, see how that journey is going to go for you." All right, we're asking about Emmanuel 16's journey to South Sweden for new instructions. Let's have a look, see how that journey is going to go. Two of Cups, that's positive energy. Queen of Swords saying, stay sharp. Keep your head on a swivel, Emmanuel 16. Travel, getting, settling down, getting settled down. It's going to be a bit of a struggle for you. The cards are saying... Uh, no, no lie. That's okay. The first two cards are very positive. Being aligned with what you're doing. Keep that in your foremost levels of focus, Emmanuel 1-6. If you lose sight of your mission while you go, like if you get distracted or if you start like kind of settling into, um, you know, routine life and, and entertaining thoughts about, you know, maybe doing other things, just get in here and get this done is what it's saying as quick as possible because, this is not your final destination, which is kind of, I think you already know this, but there could come a lot your way, like on this journey that would kind of like make you stop. Like you may meet friends and new people and they would want to get to know you and you eventually like your life would begin to blossom in like many different timelines depending like depending on what you did with your time where you went how studious you were like how disciplined you were the queen of swords is like mad mama she'll she's all about the discipline sometimes okay she will uh tell you what's right and what's wrong so make sure you're staying sharp and focused with your head on a swivel uh as well emmanuel and the star card is saying there it, there could be certain challenges and you could feel sometimes that you made the wrong decision or that you made the wrong move but the more you do that the tougher you make on yourself it's saying no matter what the environment gives you you stay true to being aligned with that which you love you know the fact like the end goal uh, having your license, having the next step of your journey completed at that place. If you stay focused on that and don't subject subject yourself to the conditions of the environment, whether or not maybe like you're in an apartment or a dorm or a condo and like you get, you know, you have to go outside in the middle of winter because someone pulled the fire alarm or something and you're like, oh God, I should have never came here. You know, this 
don't get wrapped up in the environment unless it's a good thing unless it's like it could even be like you could begin dating somebody you could have like very close friendships that you make as a result of this journey that will like i say they would just cause your life to like blossom in all these different directions so then even after you completed school it, the cards are saying you would need to make up your mind again do i stay or do i go now right do you do you want to make this your final stop or or is there something so it is going to be a long journey it is going to be one that takes a while so try as simply as like we said to scarlet try not to overthink it try not to get consumed by um apprehension or the uncertainty of the future the future is where you're projecting your beautiful self, your beautiful isness into. So never does that have to be a place where we have to worry that it's going to like take us and drag us in all these different ways. Based on your decisions, like I said, the environment can, but the future itself does not because you project the idea of your happiness into it. You follow through with the actual activity. And the star card's good. Even though it's reversed, we see the stars upside down all, all the time. You know, we're looking up at them like this. Which way is up? Star don't know. Neither do we. So don't worry this is still a good card this is aligned with your goals it's just going to say once this is done you may have a very tricky or difficult decision as to where you go after that because this looks like you know you're going at it forthright and and really in a level of engagement that you know is satisfying to you you really want this so uh, like I said you, it's it's very similar you prepared for that journey It'll happen. Okay. All right. Just keep your head on a swivel. That's all. And if you're a pilot, you know very well how to do that. But I'm saying use that talent of keeping your head on a swivel just in everyday life. Just even in, in like checking in on yourself too, right? All right. So that's good. All right. We're going to pop over. Jimmy Fry's here in Studio 2. It's 99.9 .9 open frequency for our friends here on Saturday, October 10th, 2020. I hope you're all doing really well out here. Don't forget, I am a one-man band. You know, we do the lights, the sound, the the controls, the tarot readings, the the incessant babbling on the mic. Yeah, this is all just one guy. You know, our, my colleagues are off. I'm all by myself in the studio today. All right. We're going to go ahead and update the list. Thank you, Emmanuel. So nice to have you. We've got Avni up next, followed by For Your Animal's Health, then Formly Ar Aria, Mima, no, sorry, Formly Aria, then For Your Animal's Health, Mina, Nonceba Dube, Elisnia, Purple, Autumn Smith, and Karen. If you have not heard your name, you are not on the first list of nine. But that's okay. It's not a crime, you know. It's it's not going to... I just have to give you my precursor to say if you want on the next list, it's going to be a little while. These readings are... They get deep. They're authentic. They take as much time as they need. And uh, so I have no way of telling you when it's your turn or who's next, uh, anything like that. I do keep the list. I got it right here. And uh, it's, very, it's very nice to have. Okay. So, like I say... Folks, check back in about an hour and we'll be doing and we'll be taking another list. And thank you so much for all of you that are patiently waiting on the list. Uh, it goes a little something like this. It goes Avni, formerly Aria, for your animal's health, Mima, Nonceba, Alisnia. <laughs> Can't even say that. Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina. Then it goes per uh, Autumn Smith and then Purple and then Karen. All right. And Awani, Awani, I know you were here. You didn't type 99.9 .9 into the chat like I asked. Silly, but I'll write your name down at the bottom of this list. Squeak you in there. Squeeze you. Just squeeze you and just get you in there. All right, let's get back to the show. Let's get back to the, to the tarot readings. All the fun that we have here. Can you believe it? All right. Um... So Avni, go ahead. My she Avni says I lost my mom on September thirteenth. On the thirteenth of September, I want to receive a message from her. Is she happy and protected? How is she feeling? I feel like someone did black magic. All right. Well, I'm not a medium. I cannot talk to. Well, I do not talk to um, the dead directly or indirectly. 
what we can do is we can pull out and see what Tarot's message is for you uh, in terms of your process of of, uh, of having a loved one that's crossed over. Okay. So, um, and as well, I don't dibble dabble into the babble of black magic. It's just uh, one of those things. We can see if it's present and, and then I'll have to kick its ass. All right. Abney, one thing I will say about black magic, though, it's that when you believe that it's black magic, that's when the black magic actually has that fraction of a percent that works. It takes the, the person's belief that black magic is done on them, and that's the only black magic that exists. Okay? It's, we're infinite, boundless creators. It's amazing what we tell ourselves sometimes. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. It's the Princess of Cups. It's the Four of Swords. Oh, okay. So she is with you. She is close by with you. Okay, like I said, I don't talk directly to the dead, but they can leave me their message like an Amazon package at the etheric doorway. Okay? She's close to you. Closer than you know. So you got to figure it out. <laughs> That's what the Queen of Cups is all about, figuring things out, all about figuring out what it, what it is, whether they like it or what it is. And what I feel like it is that you need to figure out is how to, how to, talk, how to, how to interact with her without the use of a medium, without the use of going to someone to finding out what the messages are. She's close to you. You can ask her yourself, basically, is what the cards are saying but you need to do some work in terms of your ability to uh lit to be able to hear what what she has to say and your ability to have faith in the process that when you talk to her directly that this is real it is real it is happening in real time the veil is thinner than you think especially when we can when i get a sense here four of swords and death card reverse that they are close they are they are close to you because they they, you know, they like they like the idea. You guys are are like hardened battle warriors. You're like um, lifetime to lifetime through thick and thin is what I'm talking about here. So it looks like a very good connection on that end. Okay, it was probably super painful for you. This is what this Knight of Swords is up all about here because you guys were, are so close through at least four lifetimes here. So. Don't even worry. They're close and you can get in touch. And if you want to get in touch, you know, I encourage you to do it. And I feel like um, your mother would encourage you to do it. Just hone your senses. That's really all it takes anymore. There's no black magic involved about it or nothing. You just denounce that. You just... Um, you just say, like, I, you have no power over me. You simply rebuke it from a very intelligent and, and intellectual place in your conscious mind. And any kind of this fear or weirdness will go away. Make a contract for yourself not to believe it. And uh, write it down. Put it on the mirror if you have to. Okay, Avni? All right. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't switch the thing to give you a closer look. Okay. Princess's Cups was love. Baby, don't hurt me. Four of Swords and the Death card reversed. Your mom is closer than you think. Prince of Swords, your battle dot you were war you've been warriors together. You've been on you've been traveling together for some time and know of each other. Okay. That's good. Just keep working on it and don't let it scare you. Getting on that that boat, and it doesn't mean that you're like I don't open myself to mediumship on a grand scale like I read tarot on a grand scale because you, you never know what's going to come in. But your mom is close and that connection is strong and sacred. You know, if you hone your senses, you'll just you'll be at peace and feel the bliss that's there for the two of you. And because it, it's your it's your mind and it's the kind of that false belief about the flat, the black magic that is uh, communication interruptus between the two of you. OK. Stanley Ipkiss. Y'all remember Stanley Ipkiss? All right. I am your host, Hugh Jorgen. This, that's Jorgen with a J. This is 99.9. .9. Good vibes all the time. 
Um, formerly Aria, I have to ask, Aria, are you here? Is your turn to post. Okay, Avni, you hang in there. Lots of love and big hugs from the entire crew at 99.9. Um, it's never easy to lose a parent, a child, a brother, a sister, a friend. It's never easy. But you process it. You'll get it. You'll get through. Okay. All right. Should we take it to Jimmy? I'll do the list. Uh, list goes like this. Formerly Aria is ready, getting ready to post, I hope. For Your Animal's Health is next. Then I see Mima, Nonsiba, Alisnia, Autumn Smith, Purple, Karen, Awani. Okay. Um, the list isn't really closed. It is This list is closed, but we, we will be broadcasting um, beyond this list. So you, you're, not, you're not out of the race yet. All right. Hello, I have a question. My mom is an Aquarius and she has severe headaches, hypertension, and dizziness. I want to know if she will recover from her pain and when she will recover from her pain. Recovery from pain for your health. Okay, this is part of the show where uh, I say uh, I am not a doctor. Even though they call me Dr. Hugh Jorgen, I am not a real doctor. So I'm not a doctor. Any health readings, I just, for the record, need to qualify that. Um, it's cool that your mom is an Aquarius. That sensitivity, the Aquarius mind is so boundless when it comes to creation and execution. It, there's great potential within the Aquarius mind itself, which is, which is a really good thing. Can I ask you, maybe just for a, a bit of a heads up, um, you don't have to tell me the exact location, but can you tell me, like, does she live by the sea or does she live in the mountains or does she live in the prairies? Like, because uh, severe migraine headaches, uh, there is a, they have a lot to do with pressure. Okay, I'm not a doctor, but everybody knows migraine feels like pressure, right? And then you have the barometric pressure outside of your head like right there the only thing that's in between it is your skull and and uh maybe a beautiful french braid there's <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's like boom there's the atmosphere so a barometric pressure um can sometimes uh play into this depending on on where where your your mom lives right where she's at So let's think about this for a minute. They're also, depending on what area of the mind, uh, you know, and if you're getting severe headaches, make sure first and foremost that you are going to a real doctor. Headaches seem innocent enough, and we get so used to hearing it when we're kids. Oh, I got a headache. Oh, they got a headache. Oh, they called in sick to work today. They got a headache. Oh, dad just doesn't want to play with me right now. He's got a headache. Right? Oh, honey, I don't want to right now. I got a headache. You know? <laughs> no, that's we get so used to hearing headache. But if you're telling somebody or you're exhibiting symptoms of my head is in pain, you need to get that looked at, figured out. You do not want to mess around with something that you can't see why it hurts you just know that it does hurt which is the nature of of these types of pains into such a vital portion of the area of the area like think if you said oh i got a heart i got i got a i got my my heart hurts all the time you you wouldn't just say take an advil and call me in the morning you go and see a doctor right so headaches we get so used to someone says oh, i just got a headache be very careful about how much they're downplaying the pain you might can you can do a little examination, even though you're not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. You just ask this person, ask your mom, say on a scale of one to ten, ten being the worst pain you've ever felt in your life before. How much pain are you in right now? When you say I have a I have a severe headache, and you know if it's serious enough, go in and get it professionally looked at. All right, in Chicago, but she loves the beach and hopes it's close to the beach in the warm weather. Uh, she went to many doctors and they do a city scan. It turns out normal. Good. They give her medicine for hypertension. Yeah. This year has been a tough one psychologically as well. Uh, if that's if all of that is the case, uh, the recovery from pain part. Um, you know, I as far as when I can pull a couple cards here and see, um, but the recovery from pain portion of it. 
this is about um, this is about breathing into breathing into that pain and making sure that the mind isn't making the pain worse. You know, it's like you know, if you say you were sitting on a park bench for like four hours, it's it's your your butt doesn't hurt. It's your head telling you that your butt hurts. So when it comes to the mind, we have to be very careful that it's you're. It's not worse than it needs to be because there is no level of psychological relaxation, you know, letting the thoughts stop, you know, it's a very important process that people have need to learn in order to help things go forward is how to like f rid themselves and free themselves from pain without um, having to rely on the ups and downs, you know, and if there's things out there that help her just stay within the doctor's advice Scarlett I like that question but I'm just gonna read these cards here before we start talking to that cuz that you know that takes things into a different different thing the emperor yeah the key to the healing is in her own hands ace of cups here very nice five of wands and the seven of wands she sure is lucky to have you it's really nice for malaria that you're there for for your mom um in this situation remember when the cup is overflowing like this we don't have to worry about like the tension build up so much anymore but the key to her overcoming this and and being free of pain is being able to step outside of pain and and physician like physician heal thyself type situation it's her body she owns it she's in control of it and it could be a situation where hopefully you know she finds ways through either breathing or um, you know the power of the mind to overcome uh, these sorts of pain it's never easy but you need it takes time and space and sanctuary and just to be able to completely just unload download and, and get the mind to be still enough so that um, it's not reflected back in inactivity or pain it's really it's very difficult. So whatever you need to do to to alleviate the pain, do it. Um, but try and work it so that you're not taking as much external as you are doing from the internal to get rid of the pain. Like the cup flowing over is showing that the healing belongs to the person and it comes from the inside. And then it flows out, takes away the pain, takes away the... The, the trouble and the strife, right? That's a five of wands, dispelling the competition, pain competing for, uh, you know, front and center of the mind. And then the seven of wands reversed. She still needs to take some time and relax. No, no, like huge, like super, you, you know, you wouldn't want to see her playing Call of Duty is all I'm saying or getting like super excited, you know, in that situation because you know, if you guys are in, uh, if she if she's in Chicago, you can feel some pretty large changes in the barometric pressure around those bodies of water too. So, you know, maybe keep a calendar. You could see, you could measure like for a month which days are headaches are worse, versus what was the weather like that day? Like was was there a high barometer? Was it was there a low system moving through? Was it the day before a rainstorm? That sort of thing, and then it can help your mom kind of plan being like typically when you know it's cloudy and and cold and about to rain i get a headache right and then you can say well don't book anything overly exciting or too much of a journey that day and you can live more in harmony as you as you come out in through that healing process hopefully that makes sense for you formally are you all right a little bit on to the health side of things lots of love um ba -bum. for your animal's health if you're here, this is for your animal's health, everybody. Maybe your puppy or your kitty gets a headache sometimes. And you want to help figure that out. You could talk to the good people over at foryouranimalshealth.com. All right, family, that was a pleasure. Shanimal, are you in the house? We'll give Shanimal just a quick moment to respond.
So, yeah. Scarlet, I like that question. The input on the law of attraction. In cosmic laws, in order to understand the law of attraction fully, you're, you need to understand all of the laws. It's like saying you know the Constitution if you only know the Second Amendment. <laughs> you know, it's... It, do, it doesn't work that way. So it's good to understand the law of attraction, but do not un try and, and use or comprehend or apply the law of attraction without knowledge of the rest of the cosmic laws. All like there's a, there's a law of polarity, the law of... Um, there's so many of them. I can't even name or list them all right now because I'm still a student. I'm, I still don't know. But what I do know is that if you were to like bring about bad things by thinking of them it wouldn't be just because you like had that one bad thought and you recognize oh that was a bad thought i hope that doesn't happen okay that that's not going to happen you tell yourself that and you push it away and it's a one-off but if you are perpetually or constantly thinking about a terrible thing to happen then then yes then that can ha that can actually happen you can bring it about all right 100 percent let me know if I do. There it is. Okay, we got it. I would just love to hear what Message Spirit is trying to get uh, through to me. I had some crazy dreams really early this morning that were a little bit off-putting. Uh, those are those. Are, yeah. Okay, that's good. That the good good that it's over. That's like a bad dream or an unsettling dream is like ripping off a bandaid though, because it's usually a sign that like this was what was at the bottom of the garburator. That is your subconscious. It was like the, ugh, the sticky stuff, the weird stuff. We haven't thought about it. We don't need it anymore. We don't deal with it anymore. It was still just there though. And you can not unsee things, right? It's just in there. I know. Hopefully it wasn't a pop tart kitty, you know, could have been, I stopped playing it cause I didn't want to, didn't want to upset anybody's dreams <laughs> but you know what i'm saying right this is like this is how every once in a while you got to clean out the bottom of the garbage can so it doesn't stay end up stinking you know you use it for garbage you take out the garbage you use it for garbage garbage in garbage out garbage in garbage out this is kind of like subconscious mind you know it takes in what it is and then it puts out into reality what you need and then it stores in dreams the stuff that you might need kind of maybe will one day need and then at the bottom of the barrel when you're done getting all there's usually a lot of gunk in there that you're absolutely done with and it comes out in these weird um funky 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 we brought the funk who brought the funk you brought the funk for your animals you brought the funk for your animals you brought the funk for your animals health all right let's pull a few cards over see what's going on then we'll update the list <laughs> because your kiss your kiss is on my list all right Let's go, let's go ahead and look. Spirit. Hmm. People. People, people, people. Holy people. Holy purple people eater. This is a one. You got some decisions to make about people, <laughs> maybe. Or decisions that you made about people that have long gone. There's maybe one that's long gone. Could be an earth sign. Gone, gone, gone. She's been gone so long. She's been gone, gone, gone so long. Okay, this could have been like somebody really old that you hadn't thought about in years. And you were likely, probably not likely to ever maybe think of them again. It could have been that far back. So that's that's kind of wild when we see that. And that could have been a Taurus, a Virgo, or a Capricorn. Okay. As well, on the way out, but not so long ago, the the thoughts that were in there, the thoughts that were in the dream that were like, you know... There was this emotional attachment to them, so you never really quite toss them aside, threw them, threw them aside. The Queen of uh, Cups says you were actually, you were probably quite put off by this, and you, you kind of internalized it a bit and wondered, like, holy crap, like, what does that, what does that have to do with them? with me you know why did this other person have so much power in my subconscious in my dreams they made me feel about this big and it was my dream you know that kind of thing 
This is can be really off-putting. Like I said, it's like the gunk at the bottom of the carburetor. It's just gotta cut. It's gotta get scooped out of there once in a while. It's nice when it does. Like I said, you'd be happy when it's over because it gets back to normal and it gets back to everything like just running smoothly and and it results in like more lucid dreams, more beautiful dreams, more meaningful dreams because you're like conscious and aware of it right now. All right, decisions to be made about people. You know, it could be air signs still in still in the situation, or still the uh, that was kind of feeling freed alongside with this. It's we put out signals through the etheric in our dreams too. They're powerful bridges to connect with, you know, a myriad of souls that exist on this planet with you know 8.3 billion souls. You know, so it's like your your pathway, your direct connect, your wormhole through the matrix, the dreams, the dream center, and and that portion of where uh, cerebral meets spirit in con in consciousness and in, in, in awareness. It's a very sensitive place. It's like at the same time, like you are the host, and uh, but you also have to be the protector, you know, and that sort of thing. And that's what the king of of swords is there for you. This is like a a spiritual partner or a spiritual connection i feel and it's like you decided to clean out the garburetors together right there's somebody on the other end who may also have had an off-putting dream oddly enough like where is it you can't write this stuff like this is what's coming through the channel message in the waning moon as well so look for kind of a an indication or a clear synchronicity now i guess what spirit is saying um and also in your path they're saying not everything is a uh, yes or no okay be wary of the gray area but don't be afraid to wade in there once in a while if there's some more information if there's more if there's more that you wish you understood it's almost saying like the information could be right there but you haven't yet directly found a way to access that information the two of ladies with the swords and the blindfold um, she's all about that you know, I've been told this, and I looked up this, but you still don't have the the right answer, right? Somebody told you, but that might not have been validated or or even close to the mark. And then the research you did might have like sent you in a completely wrong, different direction too. So it's saying, look at something again from a third approach, from a for a third time, maybe even look at this person or this situation again, and see if you can actually access. Um, the information if, if this is about spirit questing if this is about third eye stuff if this is about vision questing go back to the information again if, and if it takes a while if you have to sit through it or perhaps there's exercises involved with it commit to actually going in going down doing doing that breathing counting yourself down from 10 whatever it does so that you become uh, an active participant here where where like we said cerebral meets spirit or the etheric so that you know you are you have that seat at the table and you can consciously be aware of what's going on and then that way you know you don't have to be off put anymore and you will really get a strong sense of what you can do who you are and what you have the abilities to do i know you already know a lot of that stuff but it can be a real good refresher crash course and spirit is just saying you're always invited Shannon, you're always invited there because it's yours. It's use. It's use. Use and use, right? Here's and use. Aye, that's right. Where is Aisha? I haven't seen Aisha in quite a time. All right. So, Shamal, thanks so much. Mima, Mima, Mima. Aye, you're up. The saints dresser. The saints? Oh, when the saints come marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, how I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Christina, the saints dresser, Torres, I see you. Good after. Good afternoon. Uh. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you, uh, Shannon. Our 99.9 net .9 network affiliate. You too can become a member with a green shield, a purple shield, a blue shield, and uh, skip the line. Oh, yeah, speaking of skip the line, Sushi, 
I totally forgot because your name is blue and you are a moderator that you also have a shield. Sorry, this is my bad. I hope you're feeling well out there today, Sushi, and thank you for updating everybody. We will be doing more free tarot. The list isn't like, it's, this list is closed, but we do multiple lists, so don't forget to check back. This is a list as it stands right now. We go Mima, Nonceba, Elisnia, Autumn Smith, Purple, Karen, Awani, and the Sushi Lady. All right. It's really good stuff. So we will give Mima just a quick moment. Mima, you have a one moment to get out of reader <laughs> here at 99.9. It's good vibes all the time. Yeah, the PayPal lines are open. Uh, super chat lines are open. All that stuff. Okay. Gloria. G-L-O-R-I-A. Gloria. Starts off the super chat list. Very nice of you. Thanks, Gloria B. Gloria B, I promised Mima, so I am going to let uh, Mima, if she gets in here, if she doesn't miss her turn... We will get a question out for Gloria B on the super chat line. Would like to know how Libra feels about me. El Boogie. Good to see you, El Boogie. We'll take it over to Jimmy Fries here in just a second to update the list. We have some super chats coming in now, so thank you to our top nine at nine for hanging in there. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Christina. All right. Second boarding call for Mima. Mima, Mima. I could do a reading of whether or not Mima missed her turn because that's the last post I see from Mima. Did I miss my turn? No, Mima, you didn't, but you are about to. All right. I'm going to sing one song. One little bit of a song. If Mima's not back by then, we're going to go to Gloria B and then El Boogie. It goes like this. We down yonder on a Chattahoochee. It gets hotter than a hoochie coochie. We laid rubber on a Georgia asphalt. We got a little greasy, but we never got caught. Down by the river on a Friday night. A pyramid of cans in the pale broom light. Talking about love and dreaming about women. Never had a plan just to live for the minute. Hi, Mima. I see my scene actually got the universe to get that message through so that you didn't have to listen to it anymore. Mima says, my question is, what's coming towards me in the next two weeks? Lovely general question. I love that. So it's going to go Mima, Gloria B, L Boogie. Uh, then we have Prashi. Then we have Nonsina, Elisnia, Autumn Smith, Purple, Karen, and Awani, and the Sushi Lady. <laughs> G-L-O-R-I-A, Gloria. All right. Next two weeks, please. For Mima Love. Mima Love, you've been with us for quite some time. Thanks for sticking with the channel. Thanks for staying with us. I, I appreciate all the viewers. I wouldn't do these shows if it wasn't for you guys. So thanks so much for turning up and being patient. I'm more than happy to give free readings as long as you guys are more than willing to be patient. That's just kind of the trade-off we have. And for those of you that are trading via Super Chat, thank you so much for your donations. You are at the top of the list. All right. Mima, next two weeks. Mima Love. Show us the next two weeks for Mima Love. Temperance flew out of the deck, so that's good. Let's see if this has a result to how you're feeling now or how you may be feeling. Because I, feel like fe I feel like feeling. Can I say that? I feel like feeling is going to be a big part. Like, what are you feeling it's going to be a little bit more active next week. It's going to be a little bit more up and it's going to feel like it went by faster for you. It's going to feel like you accomplished a lot, that there was a lot to do. I wouldn't say necessarily, well, oh, wow, 
we're getting a reinforcement card here for the two most like inner sanctuary cards coming up in mirrored energy you're gonna be out and about you're gonna be out and about quite a bit this is like a lot more busyness you may be called to action multiple times next week go here go there go everywhere you'll understand how this manifests in your life but you're going to be busy next week for sure it's saying get out of the house whether or not you're called out of the house i think you will be on certain occasion to go and take care of this that or the other thing um, but this is also the hermits reinforcing here saying get out of the house to go do something pleasing that is outside of sanctuary uh, whether it's a nature hike or going to treat yourself for this that or the other thing you know go and do that but make sure you're getting out and about it's an important time for that and a beautiful season depending on where you live because all the seasons are beautiful all right we got six of pentacles okay if you were worried about money right now which i feel that you might be do your best not to become overly concerned uh, about the flow of finances in your life. You may receive news in two weeks' time of something. I don't think it was unexpected, but the amount might have been unexpected, and you're going to receive news of being like, oh, man, I don't know if I have that much, or I don't know if I can get that much, or I don't know if I can have, the, you know, have this on time. Um, but it's saying don't worry the balance is there avoid lack mentality and there are not going to be any like huge changes you're not going to have to like shell out cash for anything weird or unexpected you may just be heavily questioning in two weeks time you know your current financial situation so whether that's you know revisiting your budget things of this nature you may decide to pull out some things in regards to taxation or just other financial documents coming across your desk um, in this situation there's also money coming in this feels like there's money going out but there's money coming in a five of Pentacles reverse is saying you know you you are enough you do have enough you don't have to worry because maybe there's something here that will present itself and being like you be like oh I remember that I had that money tucked away or I remember that I didn't have to worry about this particular bill because I overpaid it last month like I said it can manifest in a lot of different ways but you are looking at your money closely in two weeks time and next week is going to be quite busy for you we have the cards of the sleepiness right these are the sleepy Joe cards hermit four of swords like I don't have to do anything today so I'm just gonna lay in my bed and do whatever I want it's not gonna be like that you're gonna be uh, you know out and about get up stand up Go do something fun and go take care of all responsibilities. It'll be a great week for doing that. Even though Merck goes retro on the 14th, make sure you're staying a step ahead of all of like the the mundane monthly things, whether they're their bills, appointments, responsibility, or otherwise, and keep a tighter keep a tight schedule. Keep a, keep a schedule that works for you. Okay, very much so. This is interesting how that was related to time and money uh mima yeah yeah that's that was your reading mima sorry if i was unclear all right i appreciate you too okay let's go back up to the start of the super chat list gloria b welcome to the program so nice to have you here today gloria b uh like i said g-l-o-r-i-a this is my one of my favorite names um would like to know how libra feels about me libra libra i can't quite see you <laughs> all right libra let's, how does libra view gloria be how does libra see gloria be all right then after gloria goes el boogie and prashy How does Libra see Gloria B? All right, Gloria B. On well, my chat delayed, I do apologize. We'll take a look after these next couple of readings, see if we can fix that up for you guys. Thanks, Mima. It's good to have you here. Okay, Libra's glorious strength. That's good. Judgment. Well, that could be good. <laughs> um, the Knight of Pentacles turned over and the sun turned over lots of major arcana right here um so it means that you are at a certain level of entanglement gloria with this libra 
enough of a level of entanglement that it affects you guys um, quite dramatically. Okay, this is a situation where somebody might be moving too for too far forward too quickly. The Knight of Pentacles is there saying, I'm about to lose my footing. There might be a bad idea or a bad decision that was made that affects the perception of the third party. In this case, would be Libra. Libra's in looking at it and wanting to call it for what it is. I think this person sees you as a strong individual. They see you being able to weather the storm. And they see you where that you exhibit characteristics that are... Uh, more compassionate than most people than that he sees Libra he sees you as like a fair and balanced person which is nice in the judgment card being there in the strength card let me let me just go over so you can see these cards right he sees you as much more compassionate than the rest of the average ordinary crowd people you kind of stand have an ability to stand out and this person takes notice but there's a level of entanglement here i'm not sure what it is and your libra kind of like i don't want to say that they burn through relationships but it's almost like they they tend they can tend to get bored with people uh, not just because they're a Libra, but this particular individual, they usually find like a way to look for a quick way out or a quick, a quick way. They never get involved in other people's dramatic situations, and if their dramatic situation tries to involve them, quickly they pull away. All right, but you've stood out to this person, and it's due to your compassionate nature. I don't know if you wear your heart on your sleeve or if you just show it in your eyes, or or maybe. Um, you have a way that you have acted that has caught this person's attention. Um, it hasn't left them indebted to you, though, or smitten or hung up or obsessed or anything like that because the the Libra in this situation shows that he runs a little bit rampant, a little bit ruckus, like too far, too fast, or maybe they are overly indulgent in certain things. Okay, Gloria? But in terms of how they view you, they view you as strong, fair, and balanced, which is a nice thing to have there. But as for how deep that goes within that Libra, it's showing that his his behavior and his mindset and what he does in real time doesn't support these deeper things, these deeper, like, in terms of, like, he likes you, but he hasn't, like, called it to a point of, like, affection, I guess. He sees you and he recognizes the goodness in you. But it hasn't got this person to a point of wanting to make an offer. They haven't turned tail or run or anything or they have no reason to. But it, it hasn't like it hasn't affected them emotionally. It hasn't really because their behavior is kind of un, unchained or unhinged right now uh, in terms of like maybe what they just do with their spare time or if they even have any spare time, that sort of thing. All right. Hey, special welcome to Hanifa. Welcome, Hanifa. Glad to have you here. This has been a minute, uh, like probably since last year. Hanifa's been with the channel, uh, hanging out with us for quite some time. Uh, and for those of you that are well understood that we're the most benevolent, one of the most benevolent communities in all of YouTube, then you recognize why Hanifa is here. It's such a beautiful, wonderful uh, hello to you today, which is good stuff. All right, El Boogie, you guys can let me know if my chat is delayed. I'm sorry if it is, um, but I won't apologize. Oh, wait, I just did. How does that work? It's always like a con consistent paradox with the mind. And when the head, when the mind, body, and spirit is open to stuff like this, to readings like this, where you're hearing the appropriate message for your space, for your thought set, then that's how it works, right? But we try and keep it linear for the average mind as well. It's always a battle. El Boogie says, how will the friendship between Jay and I progress? We met through an incredible, difficult circumstance that makes it difficult for him to be my friend. Hmm. That's hot. I want to give you a big hug right now. That is, uh, that's like Romeo and Juliet type stuff. Let's get some cards out for this one, El Boogie. I appreciate the question. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here today at the 99.9 .9 Studios. Wishing you all the best in peace, joy, prosperity, bliss, abundance, happiness. I will update the list as I shuffle or after I shuffle. No, I will update the list after this reading. El Boogie, thank you so much for your donation.
So are you like attached to the memory of the circumstance? Is that why it makes it difficult for him to be with you? To be your best friend? To be like... Or to be a friend whatsoever? Strength card reverse now. Up with the star card. Major Arcana punching through again on this reading. Wow. The Empress reversed here as well. Yeah. And the Princess of Pentacles. Ha ha ha. What a joker. What a joker. My goodness. I don't mean to light, make light of your situation, old boogie. But this Princess of Pentacles shows up at the end just being like... Th this we've made a mountain out of a molehill when it comes to this situation or at least I feel that your friend has okay and I don't want to down talk him in front of you okay but what I feel is is that there is a victim mentality that has been left over as residue from the extraneous circumstances or from this person's position they were called to grow and become strong as a result of this um, but they have yet to take up that cause. They have yet to respond to universe or source to take care of their end of, of what, what transpired and why their, their soul or their spirit was on that particular journey that led to incredible, incredibly difficult times or circumstances, you put it. The star card is here saying it's like that which occurs to us at some point we wrote in and you guys became star cross lovers around that time. You met through that situation, through those, in, uh, the, we were talking about the law of attraction earlier. How about the law of cause and effect, right? This is a huge thing. This predominant situation of, of uh, chain events, cause and effect, being foremost in the reading, no wonder you and maybe your friend Jay feel powerless over that situation, feel like a bit of that, like, you know, there was nothing we could do. There's nothing we could have done, right? So we need to heal this. Emperor Reverse says we need to heal this. But you can't do it right away. You wouldn't be able to do it right away. And why I laughed, why she was here, is because this is a bright day. This is a beautiful thing. Even in the rough kind of portrait that it's painted in right now about you know maybe we have just a very uh distasteful backdrop to the whole thing and the memories that are attached they are too i don't know either fresh or ingrained in the memory so again you know i can't get off this topic of of what we do for ourselves and each other in love for our own minds and our own bodies to pull each other through these situations to comfort one another and and in the tools to be able to do that come through the, I want to call it the the trial of doing it for yourself. It's not, it's not really a try a trial like a very hard, super hard thing to do, but it does require strength and discipline. And what I mean by that is is an initiation of spirit for you to understand how much you are capable of loving yourself, and it takes both parties involved. Now that's for a deeper end of like like. A, a, like a romantic relationship but to get to the point of friendship you know to be able to accept and receive the positive vibrations of someone that you trust okay and i don't think that trust plays into it she's poking around here saying that this is a this is somebody's inability to overcome something you know i don't want to call it simple in the mind but she's here with a strict they these princesses they always come with messages she says this is a simple process of mind this is something that could be solved perhaps with appropriate uh counseling or intervention of some kind is someone being like you realize you know that there, this is all still here that there are many blessings that we have to share and give and receive and and enjoy with one another please look to that look to the hope and not the disdain right it can be very hard for that person to do that it takes some people lifetimes to be able to do this and what the cards are saying is that even though it takes people lifetimes to do it, the premise of it is really so simple, but yet it would take discipline, motivation, and commitment to self through self-love in order to dig through. There's a lot of digging. It's like you have a problem maybe with a pipe and it's just leaking everywhere and you like it takes you all day to dig the hole down to the pipe 
and then you realize, oh, it's, the pipe was an easy fix. It's just all the dang digging we had to do to get down here that nobody wanted to do it. It felt like it was going to be too much, but really what was down there was just such a simple fix. It was just a simple way of looking at things or like you, like the old Bob Dylan jam like it was a simple twist of fate once you realize it recognize it you can just go back untwist it let go of the past and embrace the future together and maybe you had some sort of teacher or messenger or healer of hope um for this person as well could play that that role in that friendship could play that role of like you don't be i'm, I'm your teacher you don't have to go that way but just through your words and the kindness of the creativity of the co composition of the compassion of your composition or your story that, you know, what you really wish you could tell this person the most, you know, maybe making it about them is what's required right now in order to progress. But again, another reason why I laughed it off, see the sunshine, sunshine and lollipops. It is a bright new day in terms of your future and maybe even your guys's future together still depending on what you want to do with it because it's in your hands she she's got that little bundle of grass in one hand and the coin in the other being like what we do our focus and what time and energy we give to this is exactly what we're going to get out of it and it takes both people and that's what like kind of that role of that that friendship and you're right it is difficult for him because i feel that you understand the things that we talked about today whereas if like i was trying to tell this person this they may perceive that no what happened to me i'm just still like way i it's affected my reality it's affected me you know, so much that, you know, it would require that professional um, counseling and coaching to get that person back out of it. It makes it very difficult. And uh, it may not, it won't be like that forever. As the sun was in with the Prince of Pentacles. Anytime you see the sunshine in the, t the sun in the tarot deck, you don't have to worry. And that's why I got this like kind of laughter when we first started the reading being like, it's, it's all just a simple trick or one day the lights are going to go on for your friend Jay and be like, oh, silly me. I realize I'm much stronger than this. I realize I'm much wiser than this and that I was letting this have control over my life, even though it happened in the past. And then they come to that recognition like all of a sudden it's like, you know, when you, when you begin to live in the moment for the when you recognize the 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 power of presence in the, in the right now in the here and now in the moment for the first time when people go through this it's like whoa. so everything changes so quick and so fast i think this j person is still going to have that moment all right so that's very good to have all right thanks so much l boogie good to have you on the program today all right um hey should i contact akshay Agar Agarwal, will he talk me? Will he talk me? Pa rum pa pum pum. All right, maybe. Prashi, then I'll update the list. Thank you, super chatters. You guys are awesome. Really cool of you. All right. Will Ash Akshay Agrawal respond if Prashdi Tandon contacts him? All right. We've asked the tarot directly. He's about to get out three piles. Don't know how he's going to play it, Bill. There's a soft wind off the back breeze. Everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. We've got four cards coming up here. Let's see what they are. Three of Pentacles reversed. Queen of Pentacles upright. Seven of Pentacles reversed. And the Ace of Pentacles reversed. All right. Hmm. Mm, I think that it would be best to wait. <laughs> I think that uh, somebody is quite consumed by something right now. Three of Pentacles, Seven of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, all reversed. This person feels like they are running out of time. They feel like they don't have enough time, maybe for relationships, for friendships. They don't have enough time to get everything done because 
they're doing it for uh, could be selfish reasons. They could be like trying to run out the clock on success, or they. And it's not a bad thing for them, but in terms of having relationships, three of pentacles reversed, it can be a. Uh, I don't want to use the word nightmare, but it can be a nightmare. It's really, it's really hard to, you know, stay in touch with people that we don't kind of run at the same pace with. And I feel that this person is really consumed by their their success and their schedule and their their forward nature of doing anything. And I, it's heartbreaking to say that I feel that this person may not make time for you, but I don't think that this person's going to make time for you. Unfortunately, Prashi, I wish I had better news. I really, I really wish I had better news for. Them. But the Queen of Pentacles can shine through you as well. You know, you're the one with the choice to contact him or not. You're the one to say, you know what? If I haven't proven important enough to have him try and contact me, I'm going to prove to myself that, you know, I don't have to I don't have to be the one reaching out here. I don't need the one. I need to be the one that goes chasing and running. If they're busy into doing something else and going at a completely different speed than I am, maybe I need to recognize that this isn't the right time for this relationship. This isn't the right time for us to get together. Can you remain friends? For sure. You can always send supportive messages and, and stay in touch through reminders, but I don't feel that this person is necessarily going to make a lot of time for you. And I'm really sorry to hear that, Prashi. It's not the kind of reading or information that I like to give. But please know that this person is like consumed by their own life right now, by their own goals, by their own uh, endeavors and and adventures. Okay, there's not enough. It's saying there's not enough time, or he is saying that there is not enough time. Okay, Prashi, thank you so much for sharing. And I wish the cards had been better with for you. Big hug, okay? Big hugs. All right. It's 99.9. Good vibes all the time. Looking for Nonceba Dube. Nonceba Dube, are you there? No. Prashi, I'm sorry. I do not think this person will contact you. If you want to make the decision to contact him, maybe ask them, you know, what are they up to right now? And you may find out that they don't, they're very short with their answers. They may not have a lot to give you in regards to their time, you know. All right. El Boogie, I'm glad the reading resonated for you. Thank you so much for hitting us up on the Super Chat line. And you as well, Prashi. First, I, you know, thank you so much for the donation. I wish your cards and your reading about this situation could be better. But it came up all pentacles. Three of them reversed and the queen was there in a staunch reality to say that someone is just too into themselves right now and into their own goals to be sharing so they may not they may con like they may talk to you but they're not going to be like getting into huge like text like hour long texting or phone conversation or that sort of thing they they may just say like hey how you doing on social media and and that's about it all right um, Bradley, Bradley Draw Jorez, Bradley, thanks for the super chat, Bradley. Appreciate that, Bradley J. I promised non Siba I would read her, and then you'll be up next. I love the cardinal in your dot. That's one of my favorite birds of all time. Will I find love in 2021? Well, it depends where you look. It, it really depends where you look. I'm sorry, Prashti. I don't. I don't uh, work that way. Um, we try and get as many readings in as we can for people. I appreciate the donation. You'll have to go back, allow that reading to sink in, okay? If you, even if you have to watch it a couple times. But unfortunately, no, I don't work that way. Um, we're going to be reading for non Siba right now, asking, will I find love in 2021? I say, it all depends on where you look. <laughs> Remember that old song? Looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in too many faces. All right. Who are you dreaming of right now? Non Siba. Will I find love in 2021? Will Non Siba find love in 2021? All right. Will Nonceba find love in 2021? 
We've asked the tarot. Let's see what we got here. Ooh. You don't mess around on Siba. Hmm. Wow. Wow. I like this. I like this. Yep. You certainly could. The, the odds are certainly stacked in your favor here, non Siba. You've got the Empress card here, along with a reversal on a Princess of Pentacles, a reversal on a Ten of Swords, and the Eight of Swords upright. Typically not a good card, but you've got a good starting point. The Empress is saying, yes, go and do it. Do it now. You may also be wondering or concerned about how this is going to occur. The circumstances with which finding love, like what is he going to look like? Is he going to be marriage material? Is this somebody that I'm going to be compromising on? Is this person going to be on my intellectual level? These sorts of things. It's saying let go of the idea of of finding love or finding this relationship but go out and live your life start with the understandings that you have come out of from your last relationship I feel that like there was a prior relationship that took a lot out of you and it kind of like affected your views maybe on uh, relationships itself and it might have like either demotivated you or maybe uh, possibly could have motivated you in wrong directions in the past but all that is gone now all that is done finding love in 2021 with the eight of swords being here is all about you being able to liberate yourself from your past and from the ideas and from the conditioning that past relationships have put on you the more you work on yourself and the more you liberate your mind to not being attached to the idea or the picture that this love, that this relationship, that this togetherness with someone else will create. Let go of the idea and allow it to be created on its own without you trying to like look over it like a petri dish in a, in a laboratory and, and look for it to see if it exists, to look for to see if that relationship will exist. You can be proactive, go out and date, and it is going to be dependent on your ability to stay proactive, like to be like, because you're looking for love. That's what you said, right? Will love find you or is love looking for you? It is always looking for you and it always looks for you to the degree that you look for it. But if you look for it through a set of goggles and the goggles, like you got your binoculars out being like, how far away is my next relationship is love? The binoculars can let you see far, but they they narrow the field of vision. So if you're looking for love, with expecting that you're going to know it when you see it, that's when love is just kind of like, well, I don't know where. I don't I don't know where. Um, sorry, Nanciba is. Okay, I don't know where. I don't know where she is. Right. So love will look for you, but it's all dependent on how much you are willing to liberate yourself in order to look for it. The Empress is basically there at the head of this reading, trumping it all, being like, go and make it happen. Go and do it. What part about your life have you not been able to make successful when you put all of your mind, heart, body, and soul into it? Not a darn thing, non Siba, right? Yeah. I've become too specific on what I want. It might be too unrealistic. You have to balance what you want. Knowing what you want is a good thing. But the, de the degree of which you getting exactly what you want is definitely something that can, can take away the, the, from the journey. Don't worry. We'll all be reunited with exactly what we want. We're only here on this planet for like less than a hundred years, which isn't even like an ounce in the bottom of your glass. It's nothing at all. So don't don't be consumed or 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 blinded or have tunnel vision of the journey being unsuccessful because you've you've stuck to that idea, which is inevitably destined for you and each and every and all of us to be reunited with exactly what we want it's the cyclical nature of it it's the break from it so if you want a relationship you want to find love like 
You know, it, it exists all around us in the flora and the fauna and the faces of the other people. The energy, the highest vibration of love exists around you all day, every day, right? It's just when we put on those binoculars, it acts as more of like a kaleidoscope and it's like all of a sudden we're tripping out and we can't see anything and it's just like all one, but we want to, we want to take it and shape it. Don't worry, that one comes for all of us. Just like the rest of the things that come for us inevitably all, we are aligned with that which we want exactly. But to find love this year and in this lifetime, for sure, pull out a few of these swords. Let yourself feel free to wander about the cabin, wander around the internet, wander around uh, the neighborhood places where you know people go to to find friendship and love. And, and the, like I said, when you start to meet love in the middle, when you start to actively and stay proactive, look for, for that, it, w- it will feel its ability to be unchained and to approach you and to, to actually find you. Will love find you and will you find, find one another, so to speak. Okay, non Siba. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Exactly. It's good to know thyself. Bradley, thank you for the super chat. Good to have you on the program today. Um, what the future holds for you. All right. It's interesting how we personify the future of ha- as having hands. Do you have a hand to hold on to? Can you, like, imagine the, f- the future is this Marvel comic book character, right? And, and Stan Lee drew him with hands. <laughs> That's all he is. He's the future. And he's just, he's just a couple of sets of hands. And, and what he's holding on to, he, he presents to you. Right, I I know what you're saying, but I just always kind of in eclectic way find it interesting how we personify the future when it, in that in that particular phrase of words. All right, give me a second to shuffle up the cards for you, Bradley, and then I'll jump right into that question. Get them really dusted off, really shuffled up here. Thanks for the super chat. What does a future hold for Bradley? Bradley! I think of that old Sublime song. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's see what's up, future. Queen of Swords. Ooh. Four of Cups, nice. The Strength card, nice, 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 nice. And the Tower card reversed. Okay, I can see, I can see why you're here at a, at a tarot reading. I think there's certain things going on in your life right now which have caused you to rethink things, overthink things, or 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 question what you have been thinking about things. The tower, the tower, your situation. Why say stuff and things? I mean your situation. Okay. The tower card reversed here is like somebody might be like running around yelling like the the sky is falling or or the roof is on fire or something like that and they and they're getting everything all stirred up and and just because their energy is uncertain the message here to you is doesn't mean that your energy has to be uncertain stand stand tall and straight and fixed in in your knowledge and in your wisdom just all the wisdom you've acquired and by wisdom I mean your ability to show others um you know information you know intellect is about oh all this information we accumulate and now we know it wisdom is being able to do all that plus then spit it out spew it out so that it can help others that's where the true wisdom comes and maybe that is portion of the path that you're on here is where it's like you are you are kind of getting to that place where you are you're advancing from intellectual to completely wise and that comes out in a teaching ability right showing people like hey you're acting unrealistic hey do you realize that if this is true that that also is true now can you settle down please uh, this sort of thing or could the end and this could be in your environment as well you may have some serious questions you know it could be either like worry uh over many different things finances family uh, friendships you might have worries because you know this has been an overly psychological year for the collective people are very much in their heads about it you're you're kind of a champion of it bradley though i i like to see her there this is a very supportive queen of swords in this situation saying like you know what the future is for you is, is not really a strict lesson but it's a a commitment to a path where 
you wouldn't be able to step off of it very easily. You kind of have to go now in that direction that you set for yourself. This is an important time for you, Bradley, to be letting go of any kind of regrets uh, or remorses that you have. Even if you can't express that to other people that may have been involved with your pro your past regrets or remorse, don't worry. If you can't change or, or tell them or, or anything like that, don't worry about it. The fact that you've acknowledged that you may be hurting because of a regret that you have gives you the ability to let it go. And then once you do, your your wisdom is allowed to grow again and you're allowed to, to go forward. For something here coming up before the end of the year, I feel for you, Bradley, is also has to do with you like rising to the challenge, arriving ready, uh, more than ready to to acknowledge that thing that you knew eventually that you would be facing. So, and like I said, how that manifests for you, you will know far more than me as a tarot reader. The, your situation, right? Back to that. You're going to have the strength to rise to the situation. And you have already begun to create momentum about rising or planning to arrive at that moment to face that situation. And when you do, the tower card reversed here is mean like... You're going to come out of it unscathed. You're going to come out of it not having to worry about, you know, how that how that transacted or how that fallout uh, would have would have affected you. I don't see you having to like move. I don't see you having to run away. I don't really see you having to fight. You're going to show up with your wisdom it might involve the tearing down of another person's ego or somebody else becoming exposed um, or the fact where other parties involved, you just arrive younger than they do. And I, it's not necessarily combative, but it could be, like I said, your situation is quite complex. And I feel that, you know, many people out there it would feel insurmountable, but you've been questioning lately whether or not you rise to the challenge. And more often than lately, you've been telling yourself that you kiss to that challenge. Therefore, strength conditioning Health looks really good. I don't see anything bad happening in regards to this. But you're bringing wisdom and stability to a situation that used to have or maybe currently has you had you worried or has you worried. But you're going to stabilize it. Don't you worry about that. And then what holds for you is like more stability and a chance to rebuild and to begin again. Okay. So hopefully that answers your question when you apply those words to that to your situation. Okay, lots of love. Thank you. I appreciate the super chat. KC526, so 526 kind of you. It is not 526. It's actually 9 where I'm at. Uh, but good to have you here, KC. Uh, nice to see you. I'm questioning my life purposes and the meaning of life. All right. Well worth well worth uh, waiting for, KC. As always, it's been a few weeks. Glad to have you back. As always, let me just get your name jotted down um, for future considerations. Thank you so much. All right. Bradley, peace, love, and nappiness. Don't worry. Don't. You're, you're, going, to, you're going to be in a situation <laughs> where your life and powerful presence, your wisdom, your abilities, you're going to bring stability to a situation that, that currently or at one time had you worried. All right. It's good to see you too, Casey. It's good to see you. If you're questioning your life's purpose, hmm, okay. This is maybe a call to awakening for KC here. When we begin to wonder what the hell we're doing, why the heck we're here, um, what we're supposed to do next, all of these things come back to a pivotal question of like where in the hell are we <laughs> like where are we really and all the all the gurus and the ggs and the and the and the rushus and the shamans they always say go back into your breathing and and repeat the question who am i but for where one did that question and you stand strong and firm in that and then you like years could go by and then you you slip back because you didn't acknowledge it very and you're like oh i, f I forgot <laughs> I didn't forget. You always know who you are. But the more relevant question, when we start to like lose our faith in our ability to trust our vision, life purpose, is to ask yourself, where the hell am I? Or like, where am I? Let's put our finger on it. Casey's on planet Earth. All right. That's a, that's a win. Kind of, but not really. Kind of because we come here and we become much more refined in our 
in our bliss, in our paradise, in, in what we are able to with us. You can't take anything with you when you go, but you sure actually do take a lot with you when you go. And the things we take with us when we go, and the, and the reason I'm speaking of the veil and of crossing over here is be, is to add context to the purpose the purpose portion of the of the query of the question. My purpose in life is we that uh, that really involves looking at the veil because you know all the things we gather, all the the friendships that we make and and all we can't physically take that stuff with us, but we take the impressions of it. That's why like it's portion of the reason why I don't watch horror movies. Because it ends up in a garburator of my subconscious and eventually it comes out and it could come out in real time, right? So I just don't subject myself to that. Now, it doesn't mean that I, you know, I'm in a place where, sorry, I lost my train here. The subconscious mind is very powerful to your purpose in the context of not being able, of what you take with you when you cross over. So if you feel like, what you're subject subject to is not fulfilling duty to provide you with the relevant joy and understanding that you want to have for your conscious mind through your lifetime and through your awakening, then there are chances are that you may be on the wrong. You might not be following your life's purpose to its fullest potential. But also realize the laws of the universe, the cause and effect, the footsteps and and the day living out are also simultaneously they are your life's purpose without question because the intermittent role that you play between going for the point b involves the trough of the wave and then the wave and you have that that pinnacle moment where you're like i helped someone i did something my life's purpose felt real and it felt like now and it felt complete and then the and then the wave will trough again because you got to go to a new point b and it's been times where it's like oh it feels like forever it feels like it took all all millennium to get here it feels like it took too many years too much time to get here that into question if we're losing our way and then say well where the hell am i where am I? Am I even in a place where the environment I can I can approach environment in a way that's going to leave me feeling fulfilled, uh, sustained, eligible, whatever it is that you're after? And if the environment is not doing that, you can say, all right, well, maybe the fact that I don't think I may not be living out of my life's purpose is because I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the wrong spot. I can't actually conceptually do here. So you may make some adjustments that way. Now, if you're just internalizing it a lot about, and you're subjecting your, or you're posing or reflecting against your life's purpose, against your, your own personal levels of satisfaction and being like, well, where's the trade off? Is it meant that I have to toil? Is it meant that it has to be so hard? You are the commander in K. You have, you have the final say over your head, your tummy, um, your heart, your butthole, every portion of you. You are in control, okay? So in knowing, if we feel like we're fumbling around in the dark for our direction or for our life's purpose or we're waiting for a sign or we're waiting for a validation that, that yes, it is right, what we're doing is right, the best place to do is to become that commander in chief of, of your brain, your body, your your mind, your heart, and your spirit. All of it, all 108 chakras or all whatever it might be. And say, all right, I'm going to start at the beginning again. Because our journey is always at the very beginning, right? You can say we're a long ways into this purpose. We're a long ways into this path. But when we look at it from the awakened perspective, it starts right now. It's always game time. It's always on. It's always right now. So you can go back to the start at any point in time. Breathe in. I am where I am. I am who I am. I like where I am. And I like who I am. All right. Another deep breath in. So this is what I want. I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. I want to, I want that, I want to, I want to, I want, right? Okay, another deep breath in. All right, I can see how I can get there. I can see how I can do that. And don't feel weird or ashamed or butter or forlorn if what that brings to you hasn't been what you're doing because it didn't mean that you were wasting your time. That time was used to bring you to that particular moment or awakening and awareness. Okay, Casey? I hope that makes sense. I'm going to give you some tarot as well, but um, that's just kind of the 
feeling that the innate that I went on with that question? All right. All right. I just asked. I said, Terrell, sh show me what it is for KC. That's what I said. <laughs> what it is. You know, I like, typed it into a Google search. What it is. Three of Swans, we talked all about it. Re, re, what is it? Extra, extra, read all about it. We just talked about it. Spirit made manifest. Two of Pentacles. Hmm. Don't force the issue right now. Whatever it is, is saying don't force the issue. Two of Pentacles reverse. Six of Pentacles. Yeah. Um, again, with the, with the average everyday blessings, the Six of Pentacles. Okay. <laughs> people that say enough is enough no that's too much just say it's enough people say what's fair is fair don't say is fair just that's fair it's fair and it's enough and it'll be fine because I, I i can i can get into the groove of feeling satisfied and fulfilled with the most insignificant just blissful things and i have that all right there right right here and right now you can and just like kind of heighten your awareness be super mindful of of the little things that make you happy and it's going to help you know build this 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 nice kind of i want metamorphical can we say that on air metamorphical sanctuary also known as a cocoon don't, don't if you find that you're going inward and you're introverting your, or, or you're 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 in sanctuary a lot don't worry about it this has been a heavy psychological year for collective for everybody and it's perfectly fine it, and and it's a sustainable one for you okay and when it comes to doing expressing making happen your life's purpose remember that it's happening right now and that which you beset for yourself in your future like the boats that you see the things that you want i'll tell you what i want what i remember that question in the breathing mantra i'll tell you what i want what i really want use this time to satisfy those things and then be practical be real don't force the issue but be practical and be real okay and do it at a at a pace at a cadence that does not stress you out provide you with anxiety anything of that nature okay you say the six of pence is always showing up for you right what we put in is what goes out so remember when i was on that long tirade about um the veil and how purpose we can take it with us and we can't we have people say you can't take it with you when you go but you can take it with you when you go because the vast of wealth um, is is the impression that we put in our subconscious, right? So if I want to go to a beautiful island paradise, I would watch, I would I would look at images of beautiful island paradise, right? You know, if I wanted to be scared out of my mind and and have nightmares, then I would watch Halloween Part Six, right? And I'd watch it over and over and over again. But I don't do that to my subconscious. So the Six of Pentacles, if you're seeing it a lot, it's usually a, a sign to say, "All right, what you put in is what you get out," right? It's literally like stuffing something away so that you it would be out of sight, out of mind. You wouldn't have had to, you wouldn't have been tempted by it. You wouldn't have been uh, distracted by it. Or obsessed with it you just put it away you put the chips on the other side of the room because you don't want to dig your hand in there unconsciously we don't want to do it unconsciously but so you put it away so your subconscious doesn't cause you to do it unconsciously it's a larger issue in that or in that sort of arena where it's like I feel the reason why you may have some confusion is because you're returning to balance of something that you haven't you've been kind of what's the word I'm looking for it's, you haven't been there's a special word for it but you haven't been treating yourself to it you haven't been allow it's allow you haven't been allowing yourself to do something that you like that you actually like and it doesn't even hurt someone but some point along the way you might have told yourself that you shouldn't that it cost too much that you, that you you know you would you would regret it or other people didn't like it but really it wasn't hurting them you know, and you've you've denied yourself don't deny yourself anything that you enjoy 
really you you know about moderation you know the depths to you know don't let it become ugly or weird or unconscious like i said but you don't have to deny yourself from it either and i think that's if you're seeing that card a lot that's kind of a reminder there why that goes okay and so hopefully that resonates for you i don't know what other readers are saying when they pull your six of pentacles i would never yank your six of pentacles toot toot don't be afraid to toot your horn don't don't be afraid no matter what okay so hopefully that long tirade resonated for you kc526 thank you so much for the super chat it was really kind of you i appreciate you for supporting the channel here today all right alisnia 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 are you in the house okay 526 really good the list goes like this alisnia autumn smith purple karen uh awani and sushi so it's pretty pretty good and then we'll we'll uh we'll maybe get into some more free tarot a little bit later on but we're back on the free free list here with alisnia alisnia good to have you second call for alisnia That was a that was a weird tirade to go on for you, KC. I I mean that like that three <laughs> that the three breath exercise. <laughs> you might have to watch that again to catch it. I mean, it went a little bit fast, and you wouldn't do that in a way that I did it. But uh, hopefully, you kind of got a skeleton there of some questions you can be talking about with spirit right now. Uh, I appreciate you too. Thanks so much. All right, second call for a listener. No, that's okay, Autumn Smith. The chat, sometimes it gets really busy here, and then sometimes it just like uh, it grinds to a halt. People will be like feeding their dog or, or petting their goldfish and just listening uh, to the readings in the background, which we don't mind. We're first uh, in interstellar and interspecies tarot. Uh, big thanks to Shanimal on that one. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Autumn Smith, if you are there, if your chat is not buffering, you can go ahead and punch your question in too. It is, we got Alisnia, Purple, Autumn Smith, Karen, and Awani. We'll see who's left for the list number one. And if that's the case, maybe we'll go into list number two. It's 99.9, .9, good vibes all the time. Always resonates, appreciating you. <laughs> Thanks, Casey. All right, just a little bit more patience, Awani. Good to have you here. I see Autumn Smith now with the post. I've been healing and ready to cut out anything that does not serve the highest good for my life. What are Jonathan's intentions for me? Yeah, I figured out. I just have to chew, close the chat and reopen it. Uh, and here we are. Okay, excellent. That's good stuff and good advice for everybody. Thank you for sharing that, Autumn Smith. Uh, it is a good time to be alive. So keep on that path. Keep healing, okay? It's kind of funny. There's a lot of stuff out there that just does not serve any purpose in our lives. And we can be like completely bombarded by it. And sometimes we can get really involved with it, really entangled with it. And I mean, it's all about how much control you have and you sense. Like you kind of give yourself permission, you know, when you feel like being bad. Not too bad, but when you feel like doing something. Like we just mentioned with KC, like in terms of like not denying yourself sometimes these things do not serve the highest good 
But some people are on a quest to have like perfect levels of altruism in their life at all times. And that's what that path leads to, okay? It can feel really good because you'd be like super healthy. You'd be like jacked and super buff and like rough and tough. Well, maybe not that rough and tough, but you would be in really good shape uh, in doing that, okay? And as well, uh, cutting things out, it means that you do it on a cerebral level too. So you're, the methods of your imagination and, and the calmness of your mind through meditation, these are the things... Um, where that cutting that cutting floor is it's like editing a movie like in the old film that comes by you gotta like, cut it out and splice it together throw it out it doesn't need to be there get rid of it and just like in the in the dream reading we did for shannon it's like we get rid of that stuff out of the subconscious mind we process it we finally say i'm done with it it's gone and, and you can put that forever label on it if you want to you don't always have to but it's good to know those those differences um and you're wanting to know i'm a, that's what makes me afraid to tell you what jonathan's intentions for you are <laughs> because if i tell you something bad i don't want you to go ahead and say well it didn't meet my 100 percent expectation of of my complete highest good because relationships <laughs> are there for our higher good they're always there for our highest good no matter what their intentions are because each relationship we have has something special to teach us okay so that's a pretty important thing to know um but again you're you do like to stay ahead of the game Autumn smith you do like to be in that driver's seat and have that level of you know control in a good sense i think you've been down that road before where you let someone else take the wheel and they lost control and you were deeply affected by it and you're like i'm not letting that happen again right so keep this person in check but we'll go ahead and play some cards here autumn smith to see what's going out uh for jonathan in regards to attentions okay. and another analogy i like to use there is like imagine you're a castle i know weird to think hey you're a castle or you could be the queen. Of, okay, let's say you're the queen in the castle. When you cut out of those things, you kick all the people out of the kingdom, and the people are representative of the things that don't serve your highest good, and you kick them all out. <laughs> you kick all the all the things out of your castle that don't serve your highest good. Right? Castle is a metaphor for your mind, your heart, your body, and your soul. Okay, we protect it at all costs. We protect the castle. Okay, but then you kick all these things out of the castle, and you close the gates, and you got your walls up. You're like, this is boring. There's Our castle isn't a very fun place to live. There's only a couple uh, people walking around here. And then where is all the fun to be had? Where is all the adventure to be had? So be cautious not to kick adventure out of your life too. Just because it doesn't appear to be, you know, on in your scope of like the the highest good, the isness, how you define that for yourself. Because you will, you can run the risk of losing zest for life good uh, you don't want to be overzealous but you should have a certain amount of zest for life and for the adventure right mm. to be honest there's a lot of this is all of like big cards here three major arcana and the king of corn dogs being here the king of corn dogs is the king of wands i don't know if your person is a fire sign or if you are a fire sign this potential energy of sagittarius a Leo or Aries in this situation. It could be Aries, but it doesn't have to be. The Alchemist is here as well. Is it, I get a feeling that this person wants to take a closer look at you, uh, wants to find out what you're all about. They're very interested or intrigued. They want to find out more about you. But until they do, they're they're not ready to risk anything either. Because probably what you've been attracting and what's showing up with Jonathan is to a degree a reflection of you. Is Jonathan going through a process of cutting out all the things in his life that are not for their highest good? I think maybe that could be the truth because the interest in here in, in starting a new adventure, you know, it hasn't, the adventure hasn't really been started yet because somebody doesn't feel like they have enough information in the situation about the other person. So it's like wanting to find out more about you. 
and it's completely mirroring you on asking that question and wanting to know more about them because the interest is in the attraction is there somebody comes at it with a much more analytical approach the fire sign comes at it with a much more passionate approach pat you're passionate no your passion jonathan's house stop the car <laughs> just kidding just a little dad humor for you so full reversed yeah because this is about how you know open for business in the, in the game of love and in the game of of learning through experience that the both of you are as to whether or not uh, somebody even goes forward with the intentions. The only intention I see here is the desire to find out more about the person, to find out more, his desire to know more about you. But there's no desire really. I feel that's come beyond that as a present time because I feel that they tend to play their cards very close to their chest they take things very carefully and they weigh their decisions about what happened to them in their past as well and that hasn't always been a smooth sailing for your friend Jonathan either but I do like the level of maturity and the level of depth to this person I don't think this is somebody that just screws or what, what did Michael Jackson say don't go around breaking young girls hearts right he doesn't do that so that's good it's, it's like this person realizes what's the what's the uh, old analogy right it's like if you don't like my peaches don't shake my tree kind of thing right and this is not a person that runs around shaking peach trees except for maybe peach tree TV who knows? He could have a funny sense of humor. I think this person is really funny. He might enjoy talking to them more. Okay. Cancer Leo cusps and born on the same day. Holy moly. That is that is intense. I only do readings for the cusps on the year because, you know, that is such a, a segmented, like a segmented, um, it's such a, a smaller portion of people uh, and to be born on the same day is always good in terms of your numerology, in terms of your life path, and star-crossed lovers right now. So, I would get to know this person if you have this opportunity, and allow this, if you like this person, allow them to get to know you. Even if the, you see things in them that you say, well, that's not for your highest good. Not that you want to change that about them, but you would like to learn a lot more about why why who they are it's a never-ending discovery like the mystery that's involved the uncovering the unpacking the the just being in it for the sake of in it right the journey being the journey there's nowhere to go here but you learn more about your journey with each mile that you go right and that's that's why i'm saying be be willing to be known and and to be direct when wanting to get to know and this person's inter intention, if you feel like, you know, there's a bridge that needs to be gapped to get the ball rolling here, which could be, we've got the fool and the magician. This means that this could be at the very just like beginning stages or early stages. If you need to break the ice or get the snowball rolling, the snowball of momentum rolling, uh, build a little mystery, okay? Keep some conversation, poke the bear, see where it goes. You can't just, you know, sit back with your arms crossed or, or uh you know but and you're working on yourself so that's you know can, that can be really consuming but <laughs> i'm out in a boot josh all right um the king <laughs> the king of wands being there with the the alchemist they're definitely you've caught their their intention is to know more about you see that that pursuit or the desire in their faces to get to know you a little bit more okay but nothing's been established yet. I feel like you guys need to break the ice. You need to get the snowball rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Get them doggies rolling. Boy, my ass is swollen. Rawhide. All right. Very intense indeed. That's where it usually happens, especially when you're camping, is intense. All right. Just a little more dad humor for you. Always good to have you on the program, Autumn Smith. Um... We've got Karen, Awane, and Sushi that are still on our first list of the day. Then we're going to be going ahead and seeing who's left in the chat to round out the program with a second list. It's just kind of fun to do it that way. Welcome to Joshua L. Yes, going for a rip there, are you, bud? Yeah, so the castle analogy, you want to protect it. It's the castle, you know, 
it's the castle. Okay. You know, I love fat burger because it's the best. No, what is it? I love White Castle because it's the best, but I buy a fat burger when I'm way out west. All right. So the more, okay. So maybe this is the depth. Maybe these are the conversations that are coming uh, where more is revealed. You've known them for two years? Wow, that's interesting. I felt like it was a lot less than that. So, you know... Has has your conversation just been like really surface and really platonic? Maybe that's the icebreaker that's needed or that's coming. But it's good. You know, the more days and months and years you put in your backpack of togetherness, you know, of love has a beautiful way of eventually just like unfolding, you know. It's interesting. Yeah, you are. You're awesome. Because you wouldn't know it was awesome unless you yourself are awesome. That's the way it works. Like... You can't recognize what you are not. So you are awesome. That's how you knew it was awesome. Okay. So give yourself a pat on the back for being awesome. Autumn. Awesome autumn. It's October. It's October. It was an awesome awesome. What is it? Uh, would you like a little? And I would just so awesome. Absolutely. All right. Awani, are you there? Awani might have got tired of being patient. I don't blame people. It takes a while to get through these. Because each one is so different, right? Yeah, Joshua, we'll we'll get the second list rolling here in a second. I don't think there were very many people left. It's a pretty slow day today, and the super chatters were uh, were hooking us up nicely. Thank you so much, everybody that donated today. That is wonderful. All right, Sushi, it looks like uh, it's your go. Ergo, it's your go. It's too bad you got that blue wrench by your name. I always tend, I love all the moderators here, so many that just come like randomly. Sushi, you're an amazing moderator. Thank you so much for being here. I, and I don't acknowledge them enough and the work that they do. It's so great that you do it. All right, is there reconciliation between me and Adam? Let's have a look at the cards, Sushi, and see what they have to say. All right, Sushi, we got them shoveled up here. Should be quite a time. Let's have a look at your cards. Is there reconciliation for Adam and Saruchi? Number 15, Major Arcana. Dun, 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 the dirty devil. There was a lie that made you cry or made them cry. Someone is sorry. Wow. Very nice. Uh, Knight of Cups, Nine of Cups. Very, very good. Okay. So there is definitely um, forgiveness at hand um, and the reconciliation. Um, it looks like a lie that occurred. Someone was lied to the other or was lying to themselves at the time that you were together. And it just kind of all fell down like a waterfall of like misunderstanding and, and pain and misdirection, all that kind of stuff. I think that um, like even a direct offering of forgiveness could come because you asked about reconciliation 
and the car of direct res reconciliation came right it's the knight of cups being like i'm sorry here's my emotion so that 10th cup right being held part held back now um reconciliation to the point of understanding i don't think with this card being here that this is going to be reconciliation to the point of getting back together or like you know questing towards the ten of cups questing towards the ten of cups in this situation for you saruchi i feel will be with a different suitor with another suitor this person might be artistic they might be a playwright uh, they might be like a writer or an actor somebody in the performing arts but this is what what i'm seeing for you in regards to all these cups or your 10th cup is this is a love offering coming in you got the best of both you're going to have understanding with adam but there's going to be a love offering that comes in from somebody totally new a different suitor in this case all right somebody that is present in your life to change your life which is really good um so with the ace of swords being there you know as long as neither of you are like still suffering the consequences of of what happened in your past and you feel good and feel like a benevolent loving person reconciliation is probably already nine tenths of the way there the the apology or the conversation that occurs for understanding between the two of you i think could still happen if contact was initiated um, if it's not though please know that this is reconciled already through spirit okay anything that you know stress or or wonder or bewilderment on your half that does not leave you feeling okay with the fact that you know what happened happened and and how it changed our lives it changed our lives and pushed us in this direction the reconciliation through spirit has already occurred but i think you might even receive uh communication or contact about you know more of it or stay in touch with this person and completely be amicable with this person but as far as like love and romance i think that there's another person that's going to come in for you saruchi and they they could be here um within the next you know year within the next nine to twelve months could easy or nine to fifteen months yeah so you're platonic okay so you are um and as far as reconciliation i don't know if somebody lied that's what the cards are saying somebody either lied to themselves while you were together or lied directly to the other person and it might really hurt um but the reconciliation will come but you got a new suitor coming in which is really good okay absolutely all right sergey good to have you here today all right, and for those of you just joining us, I'm going to be jotting some names down in just a minute or two so we can start another tarot list. So welcome, Jasha, and uh, we saw Joshua. Now we got Joshua and Jasha. <laughs> I saw Esau sitting on a seesaw. I saw Esau with my girl. Joshua and Jasha, Joshua and Jasha on the list. We can do that. All right, that's good. Hopefully you guys can, like, make sense to one another. It can be really hard because, you know, Mm, that's good all right so whoever's ready for a free tarot reading uh please type into the chat let me know if you haven't received a reading yet today if you're here watching and wondering what the hell's going on please say hi to me in the chat and i'll go ahead and write your name down so we can get a few more readings done uh today yeah could well be everything's changing for you saruchi you're welcome So I think I've got Joshua and Jasha. I think that's the only people that are here that have not yet received their readings. So Joshua, why don't you go ahead and post your question, and then Jasha, you will be you'll be up after Joshua. Uh, Awani, no, Awani, hold on, hold off a second, Joshua. I gotta get Awani in here. Awani's been waiting so patiently.
We'll give Awani just a minute. So the list goes like this. Awani, Joshua, and Jaysha. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, Joshua, I got your question um, about your brother. I'm going to go ahead and read for Awani, though, first. She's been waiting for quite a time. Um, Awani says, is someone coming towards me this October? Let's have a look. Okay, Awani, let's see who is someone's coming towards you this month of October. We've asked the tarot. We've shoveled them up. We've cut the cards. Let's see what comes up here. The Empress. A lot of people are going to have some situations arising. The Ten of Swords. The Three of Swords. And the Ace of Wands. All right. I think that there are... Some people here that could come your way in this month of October, but you would have to invite them. It's like they're waiting to hear from you whether or not they're invited to come into your life. And I know that sounds really strange and metaphorical, but it, this is more of a, a spiritual tarot for awakening. A lot of the people that hang out here, they're, they're, they're next level. They're awakened people, not just like the common term woke. That's horrible. These are people that have actually plateaued once or twice already in their ascension journeys but i'll try and break it down for you in a way that's a little bit more understandable the invitation is your presence like people that come your way never come all the way you know there you always meet this, these people in the middle you always create these interactions through the things you do how you think where you go and that's what the empress is all about this stuff the the empress tends to just have people and things just arrive at their door right but this is not realistic in regards to the essence i think in which you ask this question in terms of someone coming your way for romantic possibilities okay so the three of swords here say condition your mind in a way to Think about how the potential people that come your way in everyday life or the, the people that you may decide that you wish to attract, that you, in essence, invite to let in. This is all dependent on what you're doing, where you're going. If you're sitting at home waiting for a pizza, but you never ordered a pizza, the pizza is not going to come. So the Empress is kind of saying in a way the counterintuitive thing to her card which is get up, stand up, go, and make yourself known. Put the invitations out to the dinner party. Let, I don't know whether this is like a dating profile or you putting yourself in a community or a social situation where you can be recognized and noticed and inviting. This is, this is what needs to occur here. All right. But I feel as though you've been maybe unwilling to do this you your mind doesn't have you maybe feeling i don't know uh confident enough possibly or you may say to yourself i'm not the kind of person that goes looking for love i don't chase after it if it's meant to be in my life then it will just show up that's like saying you haven't ordered the pizza because you know i'm not seeing people here coming your way in the next two weeks which is pretty much october um, unless you put out the invitation, unless you say, take interest in somebody and reach out to them, then people could draw closer to you this month, but there's nobody like kind of just appearing out of the ether. They're not just appearing out of nowhere to be like, or, um, I recognize you. I see you there, right? 
This is very much about engaging in conversation and inviting the person to feel warm and comfortable around you. It's not that I don't think you're not that way. The Empress lets me know that you're a very beautiful and desirable. Any guy would be lucky to have you and to come your way. But how, how high up are your walls, right? How high up are your expectations? What is the attachment that you are stuck on? That's what these cards are really asking. They may prevent, be preventing new suitors, new lovers uh, coming your way, you know, and, and you have to be careful, I feel, of the people that glom onto you that because you provide a means to an end for them for selfish reasons in their life. Don't, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't cross that line. I wouldn't cross that boundary with certain people. But again, it's about you having to acknowledge like it takes more than thinking that we can just do this out of thin air. This is a whole, when we talk about people, these are whole other independent sovereign spirits and souls that, you know, they, they make the conscious decision to get involved to walk towards somebody, to pursue somebody. So you're reflecting out exactly what you're putting in. If you're not putting out the effort and the energy to pursue love or to pursue relationships with other people, you're putting a mirrored energy like standing there with a sign that says, stay back, I'm not looking for love. And people see that sign and they don't come towards you. So turn that sign around to be like open for business, looking for love, you know. Single and ready to mingle. <laughs> if we want to get super cliche about it. All right. So Awani, I, the Empress lets me know you're beautiful, desirable, and men will be lucky. I shouldn't assume gender. People would be lucky to have you interested in them. But they can be intimidated if you're not sending out an invitation in the way that the vibration of love and openness um really sends out right people in your past really hurt me yeah there's a lot of mental strife and toil that goes on with you that is very apparent right but i don't like to harp on the on the negative side i don't like for people to blame their past for for why the situation is what it is or for why we maybe feel like we came out empty-handed or or, or hurt beyond repair as a result of our past. I like to, people to be able to separate from that. So I don't really talk about that too much. But the sea of, Three of Swords there is all about healing. Okay, it really is. It's all about healing. And this is all about finding a way to become more, more inspired to be inviting. But you, you can't, it would be very hard for you to do that until... The mind is is able to let go of what it has been doing and what it has been experiencing um, for the last little while for you. So the Empress, the, you know, the double threes, take your time. Okay, you can manifest what you want in your life, but you have to take your time very much so to make sure you're at a point where you're open to receive it. Who knows? They may show up out of thin air. The Empress is magical and mystical like that. If she's here in your reading, you know, maybe one day they will you know, fall down their chimney with a big sack of toys and be like, here, here I am, you know, kiss me under the mistletoe, right? Is it too early in the season for that, everybody? I hope not. I hope not. So I don't, I'm not really see, seeing people coming your way, okay? There's a lot more to be processed here in terms of your readiness and your invitation to be into your next relationship, okay, Awani? All right, lots of love, big hugs for Awani, everybody. Abigail in the house. Thank you for the super chat, Abigail. So nice to have you here. 777. Haha. <laughs> oh, thank heaven. I just asked recently and I'm embarrassed to ask again, but my ex just broke up with me and I just found out there's another girl. What should I do? Oh my goodness. What is it? I can't even remember what we read for last time. If we read about this situation, but it sounds like a lot has transpired. Mm. That's good, Awani. Thanks so much for being here. We're going to talk to Abigail, then we're going to talk to Joshua and Jaysha. That's kind of our current list, our current situation right now. How did you find out there was another girl? What should I do? Ooh. 
All right. What should Abigail do about her situation with the shallow person that just dumped her? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hierophant, reverse, justice upright, nine of swords, and six of cups up here in this reading. The answer to this question is nothing. Do absolutely nothing. Okay. It seems as though this person was very shallow and led you on in a way. So, I guess I shouldn't say absolutely nothing. But detach yourself as best you can from all aspects of this person in this situation. If you've still got his toothbrush, uh, if you've still got possessions that you need to get back or that they need to get back, go and do them. Don't draw out the, the mourning or the lamenting process of the loss of this relationship longer than you have to. Nine of Swords is here in your reading. Big hugs, Abigail. It's never easy. And you don't have to be embarrassed at all. Okay. Treat it as just a memory and detach yourself from it as quickly and as forthrightly as you can. The sword of justice is swift and sharp. And it may feel that this person, by breaking up with you, judged you. And they may have even judged you against that other girl or that other person. And that feels horrible. That makes you feel like shit. It makes you feel terrible. You don't want that. So use that big shiny sword of justice. And the sword is the sword of the mind to tell yourself, you know what? Hey, Mr. Shallow, I get it. You rocked my world. You broke my heart. You fucked it up. And that's this sword comes down being like, I would have followed you anywhere. But you know how you made me feel? You know what you did? Do you realize what you did? That doesn't fly in my galaxy, baby. That doesn't fly in my world. That doesn't have you. That has no ends in Mikasa. That has. I don't want that energy anywhere around me. And when you go to get your toothbrush, or when you go to get your uh, um, my pillow, or whatever it might be, that's the conversation how it comes out. Because if that conversation doesn't come out, these other nine swords, it takes all ten of them for the new day to dawn, and to completely heal the mind body and heart of it it takes all 10 swords understanding everything that happened in a way that you can be satisfied with the fact that you know what it's for the best that we don't that we're not together this other person they may deserve each other this is a karmic kind of thing the fact that they did this to you is an indication that this will be done onto them perhaps this other person in time because the six of cups is a super nostalgic and it's super karmic in terms of what go, what comes around goes around, right? The two kids sharing the experience in the garden. What comes around goes around. So in time, this person may have this other girl that he's with judge him against another man. And they'll eventually find out how shitty that feels. But that's not up to you to implement that karma or to force the hand of that karma. The justice that you do is, is real and it's for yourself. It may be, it's a lot harder on you than it is for him to say, you know what, screw you then. If you're going to be that way, if you're going to think that that's all right to go ahead and do this sort of stuff, or if you truly are just following your heart and you fell in love with this person and you threw me out like yesterday's trash, and guess what? You can't hurt me that way, jerk. I have too much self-love. I have too much fairness for the fact that I would make any buddy happy that was showing me love and attention it doesn't have to be you and at no point in time in the future you should you ever think that it's going to be you again because that and then you just detach yourself and that's when you go back to nothing just do nothing don't stay up at night thinking about it that's doing something do nothing detach from this person I know it's a lot easier said than done. And what you may find yourself doing is getting back into seeing old friends that you used to know. You might get into doing old activities and things 
a return to stuff to take your mind off this person and you may uncover a new passion for yourself okay divorce yourself from the idea that what happened to you was unfair that's the first step okay because the detachment can't happen unless that you blame them you can blame yourself you can blame the uh, the third the third party you know don't you don't want to be telling yourself Oh, it was me. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I'm I'm the cause of, of all this. You never want to be in that situation. And then you could think, what a shallow jerk. I hope that they, you know, get hit by a bus tomorrow. You don't want to go there either because that's not that side of judgment. You forgive them in your heart and you say, I'm going to let Source and your own future take care of what has just transpired, you know, what you know the roller coaster ride that i've been through with you the unpleasant ride and the unpleasant ending that it had you know so that's pretty much how the feeling i get like you're feeling like completely used and that is a terrible thing that is a terrible awful thing there's the mind needs time to process it abigail with the nine of swords but we can't let the mind consume us with the grief that the heart puts forward while the mind deals with what happened. Because it has to do with guilt and it has to do with blame and it has to do with <clears throat> shallow, shallow hearted people, which you don't want to be around. This is probably a clear sign that what has happened to you as a result of being and making yourself vulnerable to this guy that broke up with you is that now you can recognize shallow and selfish energy when it presents itself in your life and you won't go down that route again you won't make that mistake again i would say i never recommend getting angry but to a degree it's like fuck that fuck you how could you that's it you're cut off you don't dump me you're cut off on the grand scale now. There's no more of this, uh, I'm going to call you and try and explain what happened. You're better off to hang up that phone call than entertain it. But I understand it can be very hard. The heart wants what it wants, even though we know it to be poison. Okay? I can't tell you what to do or what your virtues should be, Abigail. But with the Justice card, the Six of Cups there, you have a good opportunity to really restrict the amount of power this has over you and the amount of hurt and the amount of time it's going to take to heal yourself from this. You simply have to divorce yourself from the past right now. Even though it was the recent past, make a commitment to divorce yourself from that. And you say, oh, well, he might have broke up or he might have cheated or he's running around on me and, and so, you know, he left me broken hearted. So he left you with a broken heart. What do you do? You make it so he can never find those pieces of that heart and try and put them back together. Because that is m more manipulative in a way that you ever... And you're waking up to all this. You're on an amazing journey where it's like you hit a roadblock, you hit a stumbling block, you fell down and skinned your knees in love. This is only making you stronger. And it's this level of resolve that is there for you so quickly and so forthrightly if you want it to take it right so it's like doing everything by doing nothing just simply divorcing yourself from the what happened and detaching yourself from this person and if you have to go get your toothbrush like i said you just tell them you know i appreciate you i wish you the best in luck you know but uh this this offer this person this this booty this whatever is gone forever you fucked up pal and i'm sorry for your luck but you know, hopefully you get better at life because I know that this being with you has taught me to get better with life at life. Okay. That might be really harsh for me to say. All right, um, Abigail, but that's truly how I feel about it. Okay. 100%. All right. Oh, Abigail, Abigail, Abigail. When will I be in a love relationship? Monica. I'll write your name down, Monica. But first, we're going to talk about um, Joshua's brother, Sebastian uh, Gernalewinski. Oh, wait, that's not your brother's name, is it? It's 
It's not Sebastian Colonel Lewinsky. If it was, I'd be pretty impressed, but I don't think it is. Uh, let me just go back to your question. Joshua says, should I help my brother or would I be enabling? Let's have a look. It's so interesting, Abigail, how your cards that came out, they just like told the story of the question you asked. So that's kind of an interesting thing for me as a reader because each card in there supported a different portion of your question. The breakup, the reversal on the Hierophant, right? You found out there's another girl, the Nine of Swords. What should I do? Six of Cups, right? Well, it's just amazing the way that happened. Okay, and you never have to be embarrassed to ask again and again. There's like only like four people watching us. Again, we're the smallest. We're YouTube's biggest secret. They do not want us out. All right. Hmm. Uh, Joshua, let's have a look here. Ace of Pentacles reversed, Two of Swords straight up. That's your decision itself right there, that Two of Swords. All right, see that. Uh, sun card reversed, and the World card straight up. You don't. We haven't been seeing a lot of the World card here. But this is a very relevant card to have here in a reading like this where you worry about enabling versus helping and to what level should you be involved. Okay. Um, and again, this is your brother. So this is going to dictate mixed feelings within you, I feel, as a sibling. There are times where you're finding that you, you're having trouble caring enough. And then there are other times where you could care less. You feel like you could care less. You're like, I don't even know what I'm going through right now. And if that's the case, which I feel it might be in part, you may not be even in a position to help him as much as you think. That you can help him. That said, with the two of swords, teach a man to fish. You ever heard that saying? You teach a man to fish, he'll if a fish if he can feed himself forever. You give a man a fish, he's gonna just keep coming back for more fish. Right? To answer your question, the cards are the cards are reinforcing that doing nothing could be the right action here, or will be leading to right action. Okay. The reversal on the sun card is being like you know, there are happy days ahead, but people are the masters of their own realities and their own pursuits of happiness. We can't do it for them as much as we would want to and we would like to, <coughs> especially because our perception of it is, is it could be so much better, right? Ace of Pentacles reversed. This could be really awesome, but it's not, <laughs> right? And that's what you think. It could be so much better, but it's not. But remember, that's your version of what you think is better applied onto them because it doesn't conform to what you know to be healthy or it looks like a person that is in need of help. It looks like tremendous amounts of suffering that they can't help themselves out with, right? Now, as for how serious this is, I don't know that it's reached like super critical points because the Sun and the World card are here. These are two very powerful, important positive benevolent major arcana that are up here in this reading about your brother it's going to be all right it's going to be okay no matter what you decide to do okay i don't even know if you're really in a position uh and i and i don't think that you're trying to make yourself more important you just want to help but what i'm saying is is that you know seeing this person as a sibling seeing this person as um a love a loving brother a brother that loved and wanting the best for him right we can't be 100% certain that what they wrote into their life path is going to be similar to yours, even though you are brothers, even though you are, you have shared similar experiences, you have shared similar environments, you have shared a big portion of your life journey together. 
that does not necessitate the fact that your your life paths will be the same or that your experiences are meant to continue being on the same you see the 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 directional difference in the pointing of the two of swords you know they're at like 80 degrees from one another they're completely going the opposite directions and maybe that's what's leading to the feeling of some days where you're like I should do more I wish I could do more I wish this was just taken care of and over with so I didn't feel any guilt and I could just go and get on with my life already that's what I want but by doing so you created this fear of being like if I do this in this such a way that's not really that's not really the best that's not right action that's not doing it I would suggest, again, almost like the last reading, inaction here shows that this person will arrive at their moment where they wake up to a world that could be much better for them. And while you may feel it might be your duty to help pull that person up or guide that person to it or clear the path for them to get there, at this particular stage in their, their life, I think that you know, Joshua, that they, if they don't do this for themselves and they, just, they don't do this for themselves, that they they could fall further back they could uh be in pattern or cyclic behavior i don't know if it's directly enabling them but it, i guess in a way it would be uh by you know just kind of going along with it you know that for, for some people that is directly enabling depending on how you view enabling um, and kind of the culture that surrounds you there, what's appropriate, what's not, because doing something nice and helpful, even though it's enabling, it could also just be culturally appropriate that somebody would do for anybody. And then you feel the guilt when you decide not to do it because either like it's not reciprocated or they use it to go out and, and, uh, and do something terrible for themselves again and again, like they were their own worst enemy. All you can really do is, is let, let them know that your support is on standby. Should you ever need me for anything other than this, I'm always here for you, bro. I'm always here for you. Okay? That's the sun in the world. You know, that sort of thing. But right now it shows that inaction um, is the best way forward. Okay? The sun comes up and goes down like clockwork. Live your life. Okay? Don't get too wrapped up. All right. 100 percent uh jaysha are you still here what's up og mask i'll write you down i'll write you down on the list og mask thanks for the subscription and hitting the like button appreciate you that for that um uh, we just read for joshua now we're about to read for jaysha it's 99.9 .9. good vibes all the time And the list goes like this. Jaysha, Monica C., and then OG Mask. All right. And Abigail, hopefully that reading I left for you resonated. Joshua, you can let me know too. We've been kind of just uh, driving like a snowplow through the list here. Uh, no, you didn't, Jaysha. It's your turn right now. You have some time to go ahead and post your question. Y you did not miss... Why does Nick P keep leaving me on read? Oh my goodness. Is he, are you talking about like eye messaging? Like he's read your message but hasn't responded? Oh God. Don't you just want to pull your hair out and run around the house naked and smash something? That's what that makes me want to do. <laughs> it's telling. When people do that, it's very telling. Of their personality and I mean I can see excusing it if it happens once in a while I read for you Abigail I did your reading already Abigail uh, let me just see if I can get a time on it I read for you silly I don't know how, if your delay is on or off there I read for you look for your reading at about 210 2 hours and 10 minutes okay I read for you. <laughs> it's 
it's very so like I've had a situation where it's like somebody is texting me and I'm like or no sorry situation where I've texted someone and then they've texted back and I saw it and then I didn't respond for like 72 hours and it's usually just because I forget just because I'm like oh I'm, just, I'm such a dumb dumb it's terrible it's a terrible thing and it's becoming more predominant you know that difference we're seeing in people that read the message but don't respond they take command of the initiation of the texting when it is convenient only for them that's why the phone is still so powerful because it's like you're here right there and now we're seeing this differentiation in people that they will see a text conversation through till its end and those that just cut it off at any second and poof they disappear no explanation no nothing right and it's very telling, I feel, of the personality, of the, of the behavioral traits, of the patterns of these people that do this. If you do it once in a while, hey, that's acceptable. Life happens. Texting and, and messaging, you know, is very difficult because we can't convey emotion through texting. And again, you know, you're texting away with somebody and the doorbell rings, the dogs start going nuts and you, you throw your phone in between the cushions of the couch and then you start watching Netflix and the next thing you know, it's eight o'clock at night and you're like, where's my effing phone? And then you have to go rooting through the couch because rooting, tooting, power, iPhone, rooting, find it. Like, where the hell did it go? And then you're like, oh yeah, I didn't respond to that message because the doorbell rang and the dogs went nuts and I... <laughs> lost my phone for four hours there's no way i can respond now or they're gonna think i'm a juror it's 11 o'clock at night i'm not sending them a text now my god i could wake up the baby i could wake up the kids i'm not gonna do I'll, I'll wait till tomorrow then tomorrow comes along you wake up you get ready to go to work and you're gone and you're out there doing it and then it's four o'clock in the afternoon you still haven't responded right that sort of thing it happens once in a while, but if it happens on the regular with someone, it's very telling of their personality that they they like to dominate. The, they're, that they're, they may even be a little bit selfish and greedy over their time, their information, and their energy that they want to, you want to even flow back and forth. Hey, if I'm talking to you right now, you're talking to me. And if we're done, at least say goodnight, send me an emoji, do something, right? That sort of thing. So if you're talking to them again, it's important to bring it up, first and foremost. If they get offended by it, screw that, screw that, peace, peace, pal. You're just selfish and greedy, okay? But if they're like, oh, yeah, actually, I have a problem with that. I just, maybe it's their attention span. They just, you know, they'll be texting and then they'll open another app and, you know, no notification comes through the technology. And then the next thing you know, they're shopping for ruby red slippers on Etsy for the next, you know, 45 minutes. And it's just something that you're learning and getting to know about this person, that that's the way they are. And they're like, well, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Yeah, let's start doing that. If if we have to run, if we have to go, let's just send an emote. Let's just send a rose or a, you know, a pair of, you know, a sunshine or whatever the ones with white heart or whatever you might want to send and have that be like code. Like, okay, I appreciate what they just said or I see what they're saying, you know, but it's very difficult. That's why phoning is so much better. I feel bad, really bad for Generation Z coming up here where, you know, nobody's going to have the tact to really have like telephone conversations where it's like you're required to be present. Texting, you don't have to be you don't have to be 100% present. As long as you spell everything right, Jesus, that's a victory, right? Um, but let's have a look, Jay. Should see what might be going uh, on with uh, Nick P. Hi, Deborah. We'll get you in there. Why does Nick P keep leaving Jaysha hanging on the text line? Hanging out on the text line. It's never a fun place to be. All right. Wheel of Fortune. Queen of Cups reversed. The Alchemist. Mm. Six of Wands defeat. Yeah. All right. And to be honest, Jaysha, I want to give you a big hug because I think this tendency is something like that I discussed about it. It wasn't the more favorable one. You need to have this conversation with him or this will keep happening. The reasons why it keeps happening, I feel, is 
Like, he knows that you're waiting. So maybe he's one of these people that likes to play the game. They, he likes to be, that build up of like, I'm not responding so that she gets worked up. And I know that effect that it has on her. I think that's why that happens to answer your question. Because <laughs> uh, you put this in a, in a why question, right? He knows very well what he's up to, alchemist, and it can be quite selfish and it can be quite manipulative. When we see the Queen of Cups in reverse, that is a sign of manipulate. That is a card of manipulation, like manipulating the thing. So I think this person likes to play the game. They may be very interested in you, but they may be doing this to exert like power in the texting relationship or, or um, you know, dominance in the relationship. But it's not like the kind of dominance that you ladies like. It's the more, it's the manipulative dominance of being like, I will com communicate at my convenience and on my terms. doesn't matter if you have a pressing question. And I'm showing you this right now through my, through my behaviors. But the Wheel of Fortune is here. This is good. Because it says if you have this conversation, if you turn the tides, if you make this person aware that you know, that, that you don't, you can't appreciate that. Well, that doesn't fly with you that you know let's get that code emoji going or let's agree that you know the best time to text one another is between you know nine and ten at night kind of thing i know it seems very clinical very analytic but sometimes that's the way if you're going to make time to to converse with me to talk with me let's let's schedule an hour so we can do that and it's not so haphazard so you get a text at 9:48 a.m. then you text back at 11:22 p.m. then they text back the next morning and then 3 days will go by before they text back that's not accomplishing anything if you want to have a conversation pick up the telephone actually text each other agree to talk on the phone or find a way to communicate to one another that if we're going to have a conversation like let's chat let's be pen pals let's be text buddies text friends but let's set some time aside to be fully involved and engaged in that text messaging so that it's like it doesn't leave it so surface level, like kind of feels like dirty or dusty, like you've only scratched the surface with this person. Because I feel that this is a manipulative, selfish tendency of this person to to kind of dominate being like, you know what, it's just texting, it's my phone. Or to the fact that the more I leave Jaysha hanging, the more I leave her on red the more worked up she gets and the more she'll want me. It's possible that he's already uh, he's thinking that as well. Okay. So, <sighs> knowing what you know now, I would suggest using taking control of this wheel of fortune and bringing this up in in conversation with this person. Oh yeah, I'm still kicking ass and taking names, Saruchi. Um yeah, we got Jaisha, we have Monica C, then we have OG Mask. And then I saw some new people come in. Uh, Deborah, the model. I love models. In fact, I only date models, supermodels. Deborah, the model. Good to have you here. All right. Um, and Babyface. Who else? If I haven't said your name and you're here wondering what the hell is going on, B A <laughs> Baby, 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 Baby. How do you say Baby? face <laughs> welcome baby face good to have you here on the program today it is 99.9 .9, good vibes all the time we've been doing free live tarot for coming up on three hours now i want to like to thank all the people that have sent tribute this way via the paypal line or the super chat line if you don't want to wait for your turn you can feel free to use those tools or consider buying a membership to the channel which allows you to always skip the line unless you're saruchi and you have to moderate <laughs> Just kidding, Sergi. You do such a wonderful job. Lots of love. Okay, Monica C., why don't you go ahead and post? After Monica C., it will be OG Mask, Deborah the Model, and Babyface. Hopefully, I didn't uh, miss anybody there. <laughs> We'll just give Monica a hot minute to get her question up on the board.
So I think uh, OG and Babyface are new here. Please let me know where you're calling in from. If you're just here and hit smash like and hit subscribe, thank you so much uh, for doing that. But please also let me know where are you calling from? What part of the beautiful country or corner of the planet are you reaching out to seeing 99.9 .9 for the first time? Please let me know. Mike? Mike? Who the heck is Mike? How does Mike... Just kidding, Monica. How does Mike feel about me and will we be in a love relationship? All right. <clears throat> is Mike romantically attracted to Monica C? Let's see. Is Mike romantically attracted to Monica C? Because it seems to me that Monica C is attracted romantically to Mike. Forgive me if I'm right. All right. Is a hermit card? Is a reversal on the Temperance? A reversal on the Six of Pentacles? Yuck! And the Five of Cups reversed. Oh my goodness! All right. From what I see here. I wouldn't be touching this person with a 10-foot fishing pole if I was out looking for love and romance. I'll let you know why. All right. Moody. Moody, moody, moody. This person is, like, gruff. They get, like, they get butthurt easily. They get chapped. They feel that things are unfair a lot of the time. Okay? As far as how they feel about you, they're too introverted, I feel, and they're too wrapped up in their own crap, in their own self-melodramas to have room for other meaningful people in their life. They may even sometimes come across as just straight up cold, straight up like, you know, when they, you know, they can, they can like maybe sometimes like flirt or like give you like a twinkle or a gleam in their eye but then you know the, an hour later they're just like scowls and and stinky farts and like you you're like who who like ruined your life this morning again for like the fourth day in a row right it's not that this person doesn't have the capacity for romance and relationships or love they're just at not acknowledging that they would need to be like an equal player and get over their they're I want to call them like bullshit problems but they just they get seem to get so moody or feel like it's completely unfair you know what's happened or what hasn't happened or why this has gone that way right there's no room for that so this goes beyond healing this comes to a point of awareness okay they need to almost uh, become more self-aware of how their actions and words affect other people how their presence affects other people you know that old saying like misery loves company right or it's like the morale of the group when one person's pissed off everybody else around them is suddenly just all upset and cranky too Tuh, you don't want that you know, I wouldn't honestly, Mark, see, I wouldn't be touching this person with a 10 foot pole until you see it like a complete change in behavior around them. And I don't think to honest ask your question, like I don't really see a loving relationship. OK. And as far as the feeling, the feeling is cold. The feeling is like, you know, they they care more about themselves right now to a to a. To a fault to a degree where it doesn't allow them in yeah he's a waste of time I just block him right yeah well it's it's with the temperance reverse up next to the hermit it's like they they're not they're not very empathetic then that doesn't leave them in a place where they, they would be open to new romance they have a lot of self-work to do in regards to self-awareness and presence, right? And then the healing would begin. And that, that could take any length of time. It's almost like five of cups reverse. Like they're in denial about a romantic relationship from the past that they haven't, they've, they've buried it. They've turned their back to it. They've uh, completely like not wanted to, to re heal it, reveal it to heal it. They'd rather suppress it 
and then they fight against the environment as it presents to them, itself to it on the, on the every day, not realizing that the root of the problem is something that they've been in denial about. And I think that thing that they're in the denial about is how effective they are, like not effective, but effective they are to the other people that come around them. And then when they get turned on, when they get horny, when they get lonely, then all of a sudden it's like, let's turn on the show, baby. Let's go see who we can impress. But coming from a very like superficial place where it's like nothing good can come of this, right? Okay, it's kind of lopsided. It's sloppy. All right, that's so. Mm, yeah, energy is going to settle down around you. After this year and like the per, like... Once, once COVID is exposed as being like the common cold that it is, I'm not a doctor, and everybody gets back to their to normal, and fear isn't so prevalent, then the love energies will be able to bubble up again. I feel like you're in a bit of a collective with that one, uh, Monica C uh, to the nth degree. Okay, lots of love. Um, dun 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 dun. dun. Where are we at? Monica C. Okay. I see somebody, Libra Cusp 23. Welcome to the program. I got your name written down, Libra Cusp. I have a feeling you found our channels through the Cusp videos. All right. I will go ahead and add you, Libra Cusp. The list is like this OG Mask, Deborah the Model, Babyface, and then Libra Cusp. So we're running on a short list, and I love it that way. It's just the right pace for today. So we will go ahead and give. Um, OG Mask, you have the floor, OG Mask. Thanks so much for subscribing today. I appreciate you. And Monica, I'm glad that resonated for you. Uh, sorry I didn't have any better news for you. It's just like a cold, like sloppy energy that came through. It says, my name is Robert, and uh, how should I approach Patrick? I don't know if I should message him or if he's going to message me. Okay, let's have a look. All right, let's let's have a look at Patrick and Robert here. Otero, show me Patrick and Robert. The Seven Cup. You're the one that I want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Reminds me of Olivia Newton-John in Greece. I don't know what's going on here. Seven of Cups reverse, Judgment reverse, Princess of Pentacles straight up, and the High Priestess. Okay, it feels to me though as Patrick is like. A pretty private person, I feel. Uh, just to uh, alliterate on the the P, <laughs> Patrick is a very private person, very particular, um, and they're searching for perfect. They accept nothing less. This person also, Patrick, could have had a bit of a, a trouble recently. They could have gotten themselves into trouble, or recently have gotten found, finally found a way out of trouble. Whatever it, uh, it's also showing that somebody is not ready. Somebody is unprepared in this situation. I think if you were to reach out to this person, they would be unprepared to how to respond, and they may not respond. They may tend to keep their privacy. I would not push too much in terms of like getting to know Patrick, negotiating Patrick, whatever the 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 nuance of, of your relationship is, whatever state or level it's at. It's saying, allow this person time to warm up to you. I think that the call and communication will occur. More will occur between the two of you. Um, but this Patrick person is not really ready to disclose elements about their life, their business, their, um, just their overall level of business, how they're feeling right now. It feels like they're very private. They're very wrapped up. And the Prince of Pentacles comes here with a... A message of a opportunity so if your messages to Patrick are optimistic they're entrepreneurial they present opportunity lots of peas going on with this Patrick Puh, oh my goodness then this is more more likely to get this person to respond and to warm up with you but if you have like 
a narrow expectation uh, of why you want this person in your life. If you're playing your cards in a way where it's like, you know, I would say be fr just befriend this person, okay? And don't push them in any ways. It's okay to message them, but I wouldn't wait for them. I wouldn't overly message them, and I wouldn't wait for them to message you either. That's a really hard position um, to put yourself into, right? You just unblocked him and he followed me back quickly. Okay, he's working towards a, a reconciliation, possibly. That's a good sign. So don't sweat the technique. I would say go ahead and message this person, but allow this person time to warm up to you. Okay, don't push this person either. And don't wait for them. Okay, be one of those situations, straight up. Okay? All right, Robert OG Mask, thank you so much for the call today. Very good to have you here. Deborah the model, are you in the house? I see Aya, Aya Vlogs. Welcome. I'll write your name down, Aya. How are you today? Good to have you here. We're just going to give uh, Deborah the model a quick moment uh, to post her question as we keep moving right along here today on 99.9. .9. Good vibes all the time. Free live tarot readings. It's how we do. Yeah, give it some time. If you want to. Just, yeah. Just give, you're walking a fine line with this one, Robert. It's like, don't push him too much, but don't, like, wait on this person also. <clears throat> SK Erica on the line. Hey, Skerica. Peace. How's it going today? Deborah the Model, it's your turn. Deborah the Model says, what does MB think about me? Is he playing with me or does he actually like me? All right. Let's have a look. Good point, Skerica. Let's just do a time check, see what we're at here. Just past the three-hour mark, so I can, see another, I can see another 60 minutes in here bubbling up. We'll see. Maybe we might we might run out of gas. We might run out of clientele. We never know. We're about to read for Deborah the model. However, find out what Milton Bradley thinks about Deborah the model. Is he playing with me or does he actually like me? Maybe MB doesn't stand for Milton Bradley, but MB anyways. <laughs> Make a crazy berries extra. Man is his own star, and the soul that can render an honest and a perfect man commands all life. All Holy life moly! Where did this come from? Nothing to him falls early or too late. Our acts, our angels. Holy moly! What just happened here? Little Ralph Waldo Emerson coming through. Scarica, what did you do? Holy moly! How did that happen? All right, figure that out. Okay, Deborah. I've asked I've asked the cards if MB is a player or if he actually likes you. Let's see what they have to say. If swords reversed. If cups upright. Two of wands reversed. Three of cups. Hmm. So yeah, I feel as though he hasn't set a direct intention. I don't think he knows 100% yet to what end he really likes you. Like, I don't think this person has fallen head over the heels for you yet, even though you are a model. I don't feel as though this person, has, this person is like deciding right now whether or not they're ready to like jump off the edge to take a leap of faith with you. That's what this Eight of Cups here. He's like very much standing on the ledge with his knowledge and knowing how they feel your your perception of it um is that you're like why why won't he just do something why won't he just say something why won't he just be more clear with me where his lack of clarity with you is an apprehension that he has because he doesn't necessarily feel that it's safe to be that way with you he may have subtle fears of rejection that play into this hand and play into this 
kind of confusion and this lack of action that's gone on here. And that's what it is. It's been a two of wands. It's been a complete lack of action. I think that you guys would really need to establish a cornerstone or a foundation of friendship before anything else. We have the card of friendship here in the Three of Cups up here 100% saying that, you know, if you guys were to jump into anything or if you guys were to try and take things the next level without kind of packing the clay into the foundation of this relationship through just some solid friendship and days you spend together without needing to do the hanky-panky, without having to have the pillow talk, with just experiencing one another with how they are, that would give him the clarity he needs to feel more more willing to or more safe or more liberated to take the plunge to make a larger declaration of emotion or feeling or love but it's going to take that comfort level to bring him to a point of action with that you can give as many hints or as many signs or flirt as aggressively as you want but for some reason I feel that this person kind of thinks if he reaches out there is the potential that he will be rejected and he does like you. He, this person is into you. And this person does want to share food and drink with you, which is a really good sign. I don't think he's playing. He's And he's not cowardly. Don't get me wrong. He just doesn't feel comfortable at a place of comfort with you yet where he can start discussing these things or start making these declarations or take up points of action which signify the fact that, you know, he wants you come hell or high water because right now there's an apprehension to do that he still has the ability to turn away to walk away to run away whatever it might be it's not because he's playing you but it's because he's playing his cards very safely okay does that make sense Deborah be very open and inviting to this person if you want him to and you're serious about him and you're not playing with him then create that environment of comfort of, and it, it begins with the foundations of friendship and just being, hanging out together. All right. Uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Somebody sent me the link. And so, yeah, I was listening to it last night and I must have hit the wrong button. All right. Deborah, pleasure to have you on the program. Good luck with this person. They're a good person. They just, they, I wish they had like a little bit more confidence. But friendship... They're shy. It's like the person, the story of the person is shy until they get to know the, until they feel comfortable and get to know someone and then you can't shut them up. That's the feeling I have about this person, MB. Okay. All right. Um, Babyface, you're up. Uh, and then we have, after Babyface, we have uh, SK Erica, who has come with her shield. Then after Babyface, we have Libra Cup, Libra Cusp. And Aia, but the sushi lady has just jumped in there. Sushi, did I miss you again? Sushi. On the Super Chat line. Sushi, I'm, I got to go ahead and read for Babyface, and then I'll get you in there for that question. Okay? Absolutely. Thank you so much for the Super Chat. That's how to skip the line around here. Thanks, Deborah. I'm glad it resonated for you. They tend to here at 99.9. 100% of the time to the devilish queen thank you for entering the chat room good to see you here good to have you on the show today let me write you check you in dear d queen dairy queen makes me want to go for some ice cream just came by to say hi well thank you hello and thank you I will give baby face just a minute to uh, post a question on the board Babyface was a new subscriber. Um, so I'm not sure if they know exactly how it works around here. They might have just popped in, popped out, was like, what the hell is this place? 
But let's go, let's uh, go back to Sushi's question. So the list has changed thanks to the super chat. And we'll go Sushi, then we'll go Libra Cusp. No, Sushi, then Scarica, then Libra Cusp, then Aia, and then Devilish Queen. And that should be just about a program. That will be bringing us up to the end of the fourth hour, which is usually time to cut it so that um, the tarot reader doesn't completely go brain dead, which is a very important thing. Sushi so says, will Sierra reach out to my brother and should he wait for her or should he reach out to her? Which one is a better scenario for him and in general? All right. Okay, wait, we're going to reverse that. Baby face is back. Are my psychic gifts heightened? All right, this reading is for baby face and then we're going to do Saruchi here. All right, baby face, this one's for you. We're asking about your psychic gifts, which are usually symptoms of spiritual abilities. Are you Scorpio? Are you a medium? I think you are a medium. Yeah, definitely. I'll show you why. Major Arcana is up for a lot of people today. It's been pretty impressive, some of these readings. Okay, babyface. Number 13, Major Arcana, the death card, okay, indicating the, t the trait of Scorpio, okay, and the house of Pluto, you know, a direct connect to your underwear, not your underwear, sorry, the underworld, okay. That's where Scorpio's mind is anyways. Pluto rules the underworld. And it's not, it doesn't have to be a scary place called hell, don't get involved in all that crap this is just about being on the other side of the veil okay i think that you are a natural medium you have the ability to you know like i don't know you, you're in walmart in line behind somebody and their their long dead grandma is tapping you on the shoulder being like could you tell my nephew jeremy that i still really love him even though i've been dead for 30 years right she might not say it she might not sound like that but that's the kind of so I think I think that you have opened a door to mediumship or you are a natural medium so I would stay protected I would encourage you to stay protected spiritually grow in strength spiritually as much as you can yeah I think you are you are a medium and just just stay protected and make sure that you're giving yourself lots of time to quiet your mind and to establish your etheric field so that you can be prepared for more mediumship if if that's what you choose two of pentacles is up there it's like you have this ability you don't have to open the door if you don't want to if you don't want to be a if you don't want to talk to the dead just close that door and say nope i'm not doing it even though i know i can even if sometimes living people come knocking at your door being like can you I send something in you. Can you talk to my dead grandma? And you'd be like, nope, I don't do that anymore. Or the dead grandma comes and says, tell my grandson that I still love him, even though I've been dead. You might just say, no, nope, right? But remember, you know, you do it for one, you do it for all. You do it for love, you do it for money, right? Remember that you're the driver's seat here. You've uncovered these gifts. It's like Christmas morning, you know. You open up your, your gifts now that now that you have them it's going to be like well what kind of time and attention are you going to give to these gifts is this something that you just put up in the mantle like a feather in your hat and say well i can do that i'll remember that i can do that if i ever need to do that or is this something that you want to practice and become better at and achieve mastery remember there is it's the it's the cliff's edge of the light worker when the intent is mastery. Our job is to shed light and not to master. If we ever come to a point where it's like, you know, you can practice and get better, right? 
but always has to be this purpose of it being in service to the greater good, to the, bene to the benevolence, the service of others, these gifts. Otherwise, these gifts will backfire on us. They will wivel up and shrivel away. They can be inaccurate, they, all of this kind of stuff. This is what it's all about because with the lover's card and the judgment being at the end, depending on the steps, the decisions you take about what you do with your gift, you're dealing with like something that requires a a larger level of attention and responsibility to it. And if you decide to go one way, but but then don't commit to that level that you need to with that, you may find that your gifts arise and subside just like waves while you're learning to them. You've always had this ability, right? But if you don't use it, if you choose not to use it, that's fine. But if you choose to use it, but then you don't use it for the greatest good and you try to, you know, anything like that, the, the gift will shrivel up and it has the potential to always disappear just as quick as it arrived, right? He rode into town on a pale horse, right? But the lover's card is here, which makes me believe that you'll be able to learn how to feel comfortable in this and be able to feel confident enough and enjoy the fact that you are helping collective, helping people in general, and it will become like a level of mutualism. So like you're benefiting and the people that you're doing the mediumship work for are also benefiting. And that's a really good place to be at, to be in it with. All right. So it's good. I don't know. Scorpio and Gemini possibly playing into your life and your situation in the very near future as well. But you have a decision to make as to how far you want to take this. And, you know, it's life's a dance. You learn as you go. Sometimes you lead. Sometimes you follow. All right. Two of Pentacles there. I knew a man, Bo Dangles, and he dang for you. Okay. In worn out shoes. Just make sure that when you're connected through spirit and accessing your psychic gifts, that you have a sacred space to do so in so that it doesn't interfere with the, the life, the conscious life right in front of you because that's for, your, that's for your growth and that's where the mastery occurs. The spiritual gifts are a symptom and the, the, when, what you master in yourself to become more satisfied with who you are that is that mastery for you. The gift is not a gift that you have. It's a gift that you give. It's a gift that you give. You never are in possession of it for long. It turns into a trait or an ability. So what was gifted unto you is not a gift for you, but it's a gift to you so that you then begin to gift others. That's why they call them psychic or spiritual gifts, right? Because they're not meant to be held on to we're not meant to hold on to it all and then give it all away at once right no we just kind of are that open conduit to shed light and not to master but there's also a significant life timeline or life happening for you right now where you're achieving levels of mastery in other areas of your life in regards to clearing karmas to um you know attaining satisfaction and personal growth for you there's those two different types of growth right 100 percent Okay, baby face. Yeah, this mediumship thing, this is your strongest. And it's not that it, it's going to be your only psychic gift, but it is the one right now that is kind of like um, your calling or the gateway, I guess you could say, right? Very much so. So sit with it for a while in the garden, become comfortable and confident in it, and you'll do awesome. You'll be awesome. Okay, I'm happy you found us too. Thanks, baby face. Really good. Uh, SK Erica, you're the champ. Hi, JK. I'll write you down. I will write you down, JK. The list goes like this. Uh, SK Skerica, uh, Libra Cusp, Aya, uh, the Dairy Queen, and just kidding, JK. JK. All right. Hey, thanks. I think, I think you, you know, you know, Everything that I said to you, babyface, you already knew. You already know. I felt more like that was like a bit of a validating reading than anything else. Um, and sometimes it's just really nice. It's just really good when you can begin to hear it from other people and you know that it's resonating just beyond like the outset of your own skull being like, am I going crazy? Is this for real? And then someone else can weigh in and senses it and sees it. It's like, yes, it is real. Okay. Did SK Erica have to bounce? 
more bounce for your out more bounce for the pa oh no we have to go back to Saruchi. jesus okay i think i might have to close the list really soon all right sushi says will sierra reach out to my brother and should he wait for her to do that or should he reach out to her which one is a better scenario yes let's look at that right now Sierra and your brother. First two cards out will be uh, asking if Sierra is going to reach out to your brother. And the second two will be your brother reaching out to Sierra. Miza. We get the Miza and the Strength card. Okay. And then on the other side, we've got the Queen of Swords and the Fool. Okay. Tell your brother this. Tell your brother that I think it would be foolish for him to reach out right now. It might push uh, the Sierra person away. It might scare them away. Um, I do think that whatever has gone on or the nature of the relationship between you is also preventing Sierra from reaching out. Why is Sierra so upset or afraid or or she needs it feels like she needs to have the strength to either cut this person off or to contact them. I'm not sure which it is, Saruchi, because we're going using a third party to go to a fourth party to get to a fifth party, right? <laughs> you're already the third party in this relationship reaching down the road to person number four and person number five right your brother deserves better i want you to know that i wanted to tell you that it looks as though the sierra person has been like quite miserly and they are very strong in their resolve so if your brother upset this person it's going to take quite a while before I feel that this person would reach out. And they may not even reach out. It's not guaranteed uh, for that to happen. But if your brother decides to reach out to this Sierra person, it will push them away and it will reset. It will, go, it will be over. It would be like they would if it's uh, what do they call that? A conclusion. Um, closure. <laughs> if it's closure that your brother's seeking, by all means. If he reaches out to her, it'll happen like that. Fool's up and ready to go. Bag's packed. Let's get on out of here. You could be waiting around for an eternity if you're waiting for the Sierra person to reach out to your brother. He could be waiting around for a very long time. Okay? Um, and no matter what his motivation in this relationship are, it just feels as though he can't push and he shouldn't expect for this person to come back. So I don't know exactly what's gone on here, but somebody is like kind of upset or afraid or needing to like gather their strength or feel that they needed to be strong in the face of the other person, right? We see the contrast is strength, four pentacles, and then fool, queen of swords. Some of us felt like they were, they, you know, they had to be strong in the face of the other person. I don't like this necessarily, Saruchi. What's going on here? I don't, he's listening, right? I, I don't know exactly what's going on here, but I would say if you want your closure with this person, reach out to them, but you may not like what they have to say. You may not like what they have to tell you. And I don't think they're going to, the Sierra is going to contact you, okay? I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to work it out. Hopefully you do, but right now the Queen of Swords is being a big old B-I-T-C-H and saying, no, do not pass go. Nothing good is coming of this right now so you may want to give this more time actually and then try and reach out to lessen the blow to lessen the impact not sure what this is about if this is more than just a crush this is uh somebody that has felt crushed or feels like they need to crush out the fire or crush out the situation had to be very strong in the face of another i don't like it it's it's kind of it's weird not not with that four pentacles being there and this being like a communication contact me don't contact me like it almost feels like if you guys can't feel comfortable to contact one another what the fuck is the point like what like why would we be doing that dance at all the fool the fool will essentially just fall off the cliff right so i think there's more constant context that i'm not able to see into right now there's more to this than meets the eye and i don't mean to just be all gloom and glum about it but i don't like the feeling it it gets me hot it gets me like fired up and really like kind of upset so i don't know exactly what it is but it doesn't feel comfortable 
either way. Give your brother a big hug for me. Let him know it's going to be okay. Let the new journey start. I would say almost cut this person right out. Cut this Sierra person right off. This miserly energy. And again, there can be some like polarity, some victim versus um, shit disturber. Playing both of those sides and it's not cool. All right. All right. I got the list. It goes like this. SK Erica, you are up next. Goes Skerica, Libra Cusp, Aya, D Queen, JK, end of program. So, yes, JK, technically you are last. Okay. I'm sorry, Saruchi. I didn't mean to be a ding dong about this. And maybe I'm making up more, but I didn't like the feeling associated with this one. Okay. And I wish we had more time to like dive deep and that we weren't already three and a half hours deep because. You know, that plays big into it as well. All right. I have two different things on my mind. What is the trajectory of the business I'm growing for the next few months? How's it going to unfold uh, meant to work out? Okay. Let's have a look. You got really scattered energy today, Skerica. It's super scattered. You're not focused. All right. King of Wands reversed. Ace of Cups straight up. It's kind of nice. Four of Swords reversed. King of Pentacles. Very nice. The trajectory of the business is actually good. It's actually really good. You got to stay on top of it, though. You got to stay busy. These cards indicate that now is not the time to relax. Now is not the time to be passive in this situation. It's time to be upfront, working directly with the aspects of your business, with your life, with that which you want to unfold, and do it in a very concentrated effort, in a very concentrated fashion. The sense I got about you is, is you're kind of all over the map right now, and your energy is a little bit scattered. And this could be issues to like. Taking care of the things that you can take care of and the things that, you know, you can't get your head around or your your fists around today, you have to like allow faith to really to really take over there and to take charge there. You feel really focused. Well that's good. I think your energy feels really scattered, right? Because it's like you are looking into the future and I was throwing you, throwing you excitement. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. It is. It is. It was. It was completely not that you were blocking, but it, it's all over the map, right? You got four questions in on the one thing, like how's it going to be? What's it going to do? How long is it going to take? Is it meant to be? That is scattered energy, right? And if that, that's if you did that to me to get excited, I'll give you a chance to repost the question. But I just looked at the first part. I threw the rest out like garbage, being like, get that under control. Manage that portion of you. Okay, I'm sorry if I took that the wrong way. I know it's tough to send inflection and emotion through text messaging. And I'm sorry if I read into that wrong. It's not very intuitive of me, is it? Call me out. Fine, feel it. But you're not managing it to the greatest potential with what you could be. The fact that this is a mundane business, money, physical thing that you're doing an application of such okay but you're you're leaving it up to tarot lets me know that you're not conquering it you're not managing it to your fullest abilities to your fullest potential and that's what the king of wands is all about being like you could be you could be more on the ball but it's going to force your hand in this situation the ace of cups you're going to realize how important this is to you you're going to get some conviction in your heart and in your mind scarica about this is it it's all or nothing you know this is my business this is my baby this is my treasure this is you know and i'm responsible for it 100 percent. 
Then you're going to take action. You're going to take serious action. You're going to get busy. Get 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 busy with it. Then you're going to be very busy with it. The Four of Swords reversed here. And the King of Pentacles is a very nice overall. Being like the returns for this are lucrative. They could make you wealthy. They can make you rich. It is a story of um, two kings, right? Not the three kings, the two kings, right? A mismanaged situation, how could that be profitable? Well, this is this is what's to negate here. This is what's to control. What you do and how focused you are, and if you are focused, then remain focused, that's going to directly influence the result of this. And I think you already know this. So the trajectory of your business is going to be exactly parallel to your trajectory because it is your business. You are the creator of which. It does. It is not like... The thing that the the bowl that is created by a potter on the wheel is not greater than the potter themselves. It never is. It doesn't have that potential. So the business, it can take on a consciousness of its own, but it is still circumspect to your own consciousness. Okay? What you do, don't do. What you manage, don't manage. What you decide to incorporate or leave out directly influence the trajectory of this business on the every day. So the tarot is just being like every moment's a new moment based on what SK Erica does. Ace of Cups, right? It's continually flowing out of her. So how can we pinpoint down where it's going to go if we don't know what SK Erica is going to do tomorrow or the next day or if she's going to include that or exclude that? It's just far too dynamic. And that's why maybe the all the questions followed and being like, where's it going to go? How long is it going to take, right? All this kind of stuff is because of the understanding that you and I needed to reach through this tarot reading is that the trajectory, the target, the mark, it doesn't mean anything without the person shooting the arrow or trying to hit the mark. You could move yourself farther away from the mark and make it harder for yourself. You could walk up closer to the target and make it easier for yourself. You know, you could get everybody not to watch you so you didn't feel like you were under any pressure and then go for it. You set the rules. You set the guidelines. You set the day-to-day -day that creates the dynamic. We can't tell you what the trajectory is going to be of you know, your own manifestations. That would be sacrilege. That would be like, ugh, like how are we going to do that? It's just way too dynamic. And that's maybe why it's still irrelevant and it's still a very good question. But the trajectory and that scattered energy that I feel that we were feeling is just kind of like, wants me to ask you, are you not managing things to the potential that you could be, right? Or are you just not trusting that you're going to be successful? Which I think that really hits the na nail on the head, right? There's always that apprehension of what I'm, what I'm going to do is not going to succeed. There's always a chance of failure. But, there's, but if we view failure as having no value, then we become scared of it. If we understand and can acknowledge failures as they occur during the planning stage or in any given day of business life, we can correct them instantly. We can become better and stronger for it. And ultimately, the King of Pentacles being up here, being like, don't worry, it's going to be quite lucrative anyways. The rest is just a drama of how you're doing it. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. SK Erica, with the jumpy energies, you're like trying to catch a bouncing beanie a bouncy, a beanie bouncy babies, rubber baby buggy bumpers. All right, it's all over the map. Uh, Libra cusp, are you in the house? We got Libra cusp, then we've got Aya, then D Queen, and then J K. No, you're the best, silly. You're the best. You're welcome, Saruchi. You still have a heavy heart that's trying to overpower you. Eat some ice cream. Life is great. Hi, Lucilla. Welcome. Unfortunately, the list is closed, everybody. We looked down at the, the psychic gas tank, and we realized that we were almost running on empty. We've got a few readings left to go today, and then that's going to be a, uh, a chicken Caesar wrap. Kisses from Argentina. I'm sorry, Lucilla. Big kisses back to Argentina. You're going to have to hit the subscribe button and come back again on another program um, because the list is closed and we're, we're almost all done for today, Lucila. Okay, lots of love. Second call for Libra Cusp 
if Libra Cusp is in the house. That's good. That it, I'm glad to hear it's going well, Skarika. That's good. You're crying. Good. Cry. Cry. Cry, cry, cry. Right? Bob Marley, no woman, no cry. I'm just saying, Scarlett, it's okay to cry. Just let every tear hit the pillow. Get it all out. Scream. You know. Do the monkey dance. You know, eat some ice cream. Watch your favorite uh, show. Okay. Get dreamy, fantasize. Your mind is a powerful tool. You can't let it dominate you. If you let your mind dominate you, you will serve it. But if you are able to step out of your problems and treat yourself the way you deserve to be treated and do it from your point of yourself, you will win. You will have victor victory over this. Does Stephen love me? Oh. Let's not beat around the bush here. 926-92. The Stephen Love Libra Cusp 23. You know that's uh, not 92... Those babies, people born in that year are just about to have their Saturn return, I think. They're at like 28, 29's coming up fast. Nine of Pentacles. The Moon reversed. The Devil reversed. And the Three of Cups reversed. There's only a yes or no question, Libra Cuss. How long has it been since you talked to this person? I don't get a tinge not even a tincture not even a little bit of romantic intention from Stephen coming towards you at this time this is just like a large distance that's been between the two of you have you not talked for a long period of time is somebody keeping secrets or hiding things from the other person does it feel like there's no cornerstone of friendship that's been established? There's, it doesn't even seem like there is a mutual respect that, you know, we can draw upon here in this reading, Libra Cusp. This is really hard information to give. You've got the Nine of Pentacles, a lady in the garden, indicating a single person. Okay, you've got the Moon card reversed here, indicating uh, disillusion and confusion, right, and instability. The devil reverse here is even more instability. And this is like um, somebody who has not tied themselves to the idea of giving their energy to another. And then you've got the three of cups reversed, which is why I say that the cornerstone, the, the friendship foundation. Why does it feel like there's been a falling away? Why does it feel like someone is keeping secrets? And why does it feel like it's hard to extract any joy when I'm trying to look at the at the two of you together, right? It doesn't show the togetherness of people. The only card that does that is the Three of Pentacles, and it's coming to mirrored energy, indicating that there could be a falling out, or that somebody got extremely jealous of it in a situation, and it was so strong, or that the friendship was not strong enough to overcome any kind of jealous tendencies or greediness over, over time and energy. So... This person, Stephen, that's why I ask you, how long, is, how long has it been since you talked? Like, really talked? And if you live together, I don't know if you, I don't think you live together. Um, I, don't, I don't even get the feeling that you get a chance to see each other that often. Which is why I'm not getting the outpouring of emotion that we asked for if it was present. So there's something, he could love you and something could be blocking it. Or there could just be a lack of energy coming from his source that's being directed towards you. There's some big blockers here. The devil and the moon being like, whew, is this person like running from the law? Does this person have like a super troubled past? Does this person um, not like, and again, we talked about 92 having the Saturn return, right? That's, that's, that's this, even though this is Capricorn, generally. 
Okay, Saturn's been hanging out there quite a bit as of late. But the fact that this person is about to have their Saturn turn means that their whole life has been turned on their head, on its head. They need to figure something out for for good, for final. They need to achieve some sort of life lesson and life understanding. And until they do so, the, their relationships are going to be very topsy-turvy and very rocky-rolly and very unstable. Again, with the moon reversed here. It's not that they're an unstable person. They're just at a un very unstable chapter in their life right now. And it could be that they do have love for you, but it's just being blocked because they have so much other problems to deal with right now. Like they're being tested by source. A character is, is getting ready to, to be refined to direct this person um, into their 30s and into their 40s. It's a very important process or time in life. And they could be struggling with something deeply. It may have something to do with you, but it doesn't necessarily have to have something to do with you. If you are directly involved and you have the ability to ask this person where they stand with you on uh, their emotions, then do it, right? Because if you don't, you're not going to see a demonstration of love come forward from this person. It's hard news to give. And I don't mean to be the big dick lifting energy around, right? But I, I, it, it's always easier said than done for me sitting here in the studio and saying, like, this is what it is. But when you come here, you got to come here with the expectation that tarot tells a story that tarot tells, all right? So it's hard to deliver rough news and, you know, sometimes even say I'm sorry if it resonated, um, you know, that sort of thing. Libra cusp, there's plenty of sunshine and good days ahead. There, there definitely are. It's just that this idea of this person, I don't know, they could be wrapped up in all kinds of like stuff that is not good for their own future as well. Their love energy is blocked and love is the highest vibration. So when you choose to share it with another or when you feel like you need to have it with another or you wonder if another person has that vibration towards you, you got to be prepared because not everybody can handle love. Not every, not everybody and people are at portions of their life where they can handle love and they do fare well in relationships and romance and then the, you know, few years go by and and they lose touch and you know it's very difficult to get back on that train that love train join the love train very very heavy year psychologically for everybody involved okay all of collective all right welcome life captured sorry we're at the end of the program today this is just on the last three readings here for the day and then we're about to call it. Thanks to everybody that's come to the program today. Everybody that's vibed out with us here at 99.9. .9. For those of you that donated and, and sent tribute uh, to the channel, we thank you uh, quite a bit. All right. So ask Stephen if he does. You know, you'll get a straight answer. Right. If you, and if you get an answer that's contradictory to the way that you feel, you would. I can't get this forward through enough. If somebody loved you, you would feel it. You wouldn't have to question it. It being love. The highest vibration. The most potent and important frequency on the entire planet. It wouldn't be a question if that person loved you. So, nine times out of ten, if our mind is in a place where we're questioning whether or not somebody loves us, the answer is probably not very well, if at all. Okay. Uh, second call for Aya, if you are there, Aya. Hi, Lucilla. I'm sorry. Big hugs, Libra Cusp. I don't mean to be such a meanie, like I big brothered you. So, big hugs and lots of love. Brighter days ahead. Okay. That was a tough one. All right, JK. Uh, I don't know if the devilish queen uh, is around, but she was on the list. She said she just stopped by to say hi. Just like Life Captured. Welcome, Life Captured. Sorry, we're, we're on the very last reading of the day here, but if, if you guys had jumped in here, uh, find out how to subscribe and hit that, that button. Uh, we'll make sure to catch you in. Uh, on the next live program, which should be coming up next Sunday. 
Mystic Sundays, tomorrow's program, uh, is a no-go. It's Thanksgiving up here in Canada, so um, that's just the way we roll that. So we're doing the live tarot readings today, okay? All right, JK, let's go. What are Jay the Virgo's feelings for me? Let's have a look. Jay the Virgo. All right, what does Jay the Virgo feel for JK? The Wheel, the Five of Pentacles, the Four of Wands, and the Sun card reversed. Okay, so let's start with the Wheel. I think he feels pretty optimistic about where things may go with you. I think he views you and feels like you are an optimistic person. Okay, Maybe he compares it to himself either. Maybe he kind of gets inspired by your levels of optimism, JK. Because the Five Pentacles showed up in this reading. The card of lack mentality. The card of deep spiritual understanding about what's important in life. The things that are important in life and I just don't feel like he's at a place right now for that to be center stage but this person is again I think they want to be with you the four of wands is there they may be too shy to offer an invitation to you they may be too fearful or too apprehensive to come forward with their feelings about you I don't know if you work with this person but it's almost like they don't want to tell you how they feel about you even if you were to ask him, they would like run away. They wouldn't tell you. Four of Wands here as well. Know that everything is, is stable and secure. There is a shelter from the storm, whatever that means. Four of Wands is there saying that you can vibe at a vibration either with or without this person. I don't know like the essence of, of the depth of your desire even towards uh, Jay the Virgo. If you desire them strongly or if you're just kind of curious and you want to figure them out, not too sure where that's at with you. So be very honest with yourself is what the cards are saying with that sun card reversed. And they may not be as innocent as they seem. Or this person may recognize that you may not be as innocent as you seem. And they're waiting to see more from you. The Wheel of Fortune oftentimes has to deal with patience and waiting. To, to be shown more, to be given more evidence of, right? <laughs> so, so, so much like in a mirrored energy, right? So, yeah, you're both a little bit timid and you're both a little bit worried because it's like the worst case scenario, sisters, you know? We're so afraid of not getting what we want that we trick ourselves into not going after what we want. Does that make sense? The fear of not getting it prevents us from actually trying to go and get it. So that's either you or them or maybe both of you. And that's where this stands right now. Are you going to take action? I think one of you will eventually. Four of Wands. And it's going to turn into like memorable experiences. It's going to turn into something comfortable. Right? He'd run away. Right? <laughs> uh, men have a, a way of doing that. <laughs> it's funny. Even when they are attracted. So... Yeah, I think this person is, is interested, but there's a lot of kind of like, phob I want to call it phobia-based fear. It's like unrealistic fear of what could or couldn't be. It's just not concrete. It's not solid. Like, I don't know. They may wish that the terms of your relationship were different now so that things could be better. Is like almost someone is afraid of like taking things next level, maybe from friendship to relationship. It threatens the friendship so that they don't do it, right? Yeah, or maybe that's you being scared of that. And that can affect the energy very strongly into this person, you know, picking up on that subconsciously from you and then not, not declaring their feelings for you, right? I think he, view, he he views you and feels that you're an optimist. 
he also sees somebody that's a, f- a fighter and someone that, you know, stands up to challenges. They see somebody that's compassionate and willing to help others that has a lot of love to share and a lot of love to give, which is really nice, the fact that he's picking up on this. I think that this Virgo is a pretty uh, intuitive person. So if, you know, if they're scared, it's it's maybe because... They realize that, you know, taking things next level with you would be like a point of no return, right? And that's scary. That's scary. Like if, you, if you're going to give your life over to another person, you know, if you're going to let down your walls and, and, and be willing to be vulnerable in front of a person and let that person 100% into the heart, definitely that fear is, it's not that it's insurmountable, but it is a huge fear fear and this is a realistic fear it's not even a phobia based fear it's a realistic one that that person can do a lot of damage when they're in there and again if this person is a virgo you ever know this you go to a virgo's house and they invite you in make yourself at home but sit right there and don't touch anything i don't want you messing with the with the sound on my stereo or or touching the the picture on my or moving the picture on my wall you know make yourself at home but sit right there and don't touch anything you know, uh, it's just the way I, li- I got everything just the way I like it in my life. I don't need anybody coming in here and messing things around. <laughs> that's, that's kind of a, a, a typical Virgo <laughs> characteristic or quality. So if they fall into that category, you would recognize that and you'd have to evaluate being like, oh, wow, <laughs> this person wants me in their life, but they want me in their life on their terms. <laughs> uh, then you might like that. I, I'm not here to judge. okay JK lots of love I hope things work out for you with this person if you want um, I don't want to completely attach to the uh, idea of him we're still getting to know each other yeah it's okay there's a lot of room that's and that's why the wheel of fortune is there there's lots of time to see there's lots of time to wait right tale of both worlds a tale of two cities you know left out in the cold versus being warm and invited in and there's fear and apprehension as a result of that but no matter how it goes the sun's coming up tomorrow that's the way it, that's the way it happens okay 100 percent. what the heck is going on here we got bunnies running around all right hello everybody uh. And you're a Virgo too. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Maybe it could just work out then very nicely. You know, just keep doing what you're doing here with this person. Stay optimistic about it and don't get wrapped up in your head. Uh, and and don't get ner- try not to get nervous about the situation. It'll help you out. Let go of the fear and, and just take what comes. I like that you said you're not attached to the idea of this person in any particular role in their life. Just... View them with the viewpoint of a high vibration of love that you appreciate them being who they are. And great magic, even miracles can occur when you start to silently witness things without these level of of influence and expectation. And that's, I think the optimist in you will allow you to do that. Okay, JK, lots of love. Hi, Luna Moon. I am sorry, the program has just ended jk was the last reading you just missed out luna and i'm sorry if i had more energy to give i would but we're at the end of the show i'm at the end of my tank i'm at the at the end of the situation so we're gonna have to get you to come back again on the next program thanks so much everybody that's come to the program today it's been a fun saturday to be with you i want to wish you all the best in peace prosperity joy bliss abundance happiness and well-being for all your days okay and for every moment in space and time uh always a pleasure to be with you luna moon i'll cut you a card okay princess of cups okay understand understand the love understand the love okay understand what this person is truly wanting to say to you and understand that the reason they do things maybe aren't meant for you to understand but they definitely want you to know that they're trying to express themselves in the best way possible for you. Okay. Yeah, come back when we when we got more energy and time and all that stuff and that stuff. Okay. Hello, 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 and goodbye, everybody. It's that time of the program where uh, we sing our favorite song. Happy trails to you. 
until we meet again. Happy trails to you. You, my dear old friend. The baby's all shaken and ready to fall off. <laughs> no, sorry, uh, a wellness, Amira. Sorry, Amira, we are done for the day. Otherwise, I will need emotional and mental wellness because we have been doing this for just about four hours today. And I am... Am I pooped or am I wiped? Gross. Yeah, I'm both of those things. <laughs> Don't you just love our common expressions? I can't. I just can't. I'm pooped. I just can't. I'm wiped. I was pooped and then I was wiped. It's kind of like a progression. And now I just can't even function. <laughs> lots of love. Lots of laughter. Lots of good for everybody here for the month of October. I want to wish you once again all the best. And thanks for joining us again today. Okay. Namaste, friends. <laughs>